Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Your name is exalted. Your name is exalted. Sire mi sono zucca e azalea Radici con bosso, 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 Lord, we are you for today. We declare that by your word and by your spirit, we access the truth of life. We access the truth of power. Even in Jesus' precious mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. This is a very important subject. Pray that God will grant your spirit expansion. Why is expansion necessary? It's necessary for you to be able to properly capture what is being said to you. Because you see, um, why is the cross necessary? Why must we understand the beginning of the cross? What is this about the cross? That's so important to every believer. Why is it necessary? Remember that last week we made a statement, be determined to stand by God's promise to you this year. Okay, The fact that you have declared that God will do it this year, if you don't stand by it, month after month, stand by what God has promised you. Do you understand? Uh -huh. Pray about it, be conscious of it, listen to it. The more you're conscious of it, the more you listen to it, the more things will change as the months go by. It, it will bring you to a place where you recognize that time is going, you can't waste time like that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So every destiny is a product of time. If you want time, if you want to express your life, your destiny, time. And the Bible says, as we understood last week in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, time and chance happens to everybody. That means that when we get to heaven, nobody can blame God for how their life went. God would rather blame you for how you spent the time. Right, so the time he said that in Hebrews chapter 5, the verse number 13. Huh? What did I say? Go there, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. Paul was saying something, uh -huh. verse, verse 12. Go to start from verse 12. Uh -huh. For when for the time you ought to be teacher, it means as a Christian, God is building you to a day where you must become a teacher. And when he says teacher, he's not talking about a preacher, he's saying that you must come to a day in your life, you too, you can explain the things you understand to somebody. You can explain why you pray. You can explain why you fast. He said, when there was, there was a time I was expecting that you become teachers, but you need to still be taught. When you should have become teachers by now. So time is the expression of destiny. That means that in the spirit, eh, God has destined that these people be teachers, but they didn't understand the, the magnitude of time. It means that in heaven, some people will die and God will say, you ought to have been rich. Yes, but you didn't know there was a time for your wealth. I, I use um, the story of um, Hannah many times in our understanding of the Bible. And I've said to you many times that when you read the story of Hannah, you will notice that she had other children. But her life started as she was barren. Until she gave her first child as a sacrifice to God. Other children didn't follow. So some of you are here, it's not that you can't travel, it's not that you can't get scholarship. There is a time for something you are not looking at. And because of that, certain things are not happening. And you think God has denied you something. He said, when for the time you ought to be teachers, you are still looking for someone to teach you. So the kind of teachings you are receiving in, in church is designed for you to also be a teacher to somebody. After a year, you should plan your life in such a way that after a year, there are many things you can explain to people. Yes. Because you keep listening to what you are being taught. You memorize the scriptures. You are studying again. So that when someone now asks you that in 2025, what should we do? You know what to do. Because you have understood by the time. There's a time for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that's why I said to you that when we get to heaven, you can't blame God ultimately. He will show you that there was a time. There was a time for your marriage. There was a time for your children. There was a time for you to become rich. There was a time. But what did you use your time for? Yes, so I told you last week that whatever you are not is whatever you have not decided to use your time for. 
That is a simple something. You cannot, you cannot be born spiritual. There is something you must exchange your time for to be spiritual. You cannot, you don't wake up one day and know the Bible. There is something you must, if you don't read, you will not know. Even people who have the gift of memory, they have to read. Because what are you remembering if you've not seen? So don't say you are sharp, you remember things. If you don't listen to it, what will you remember? So you can be a very gifted person mentally. But if you read nothing, nothing will stick. So the fact that you are sharp, when you read something once it stays, keep reading, otherwise it will vanish. Memory is only effective on the basis of information. If there's no information, what is the memory for? So God is in heaven watching us. Amen. He said to Israel, so you've gone around this thing 40 years. You didn't realize 40 years has passed. It is God who had to come and remind them that this thing, so it means in the spirit, God didn't plan that it should be 40 years. Somebody was just enjoying cycle. We go, we come the same year. So year after year, your, your th three years have passed, five years have passed. No, nah, something has changed in your life. You've dated five people, there's six person, the same thing is happening again. It means time happened, but you didn't learn anything. Yeah. Five people you've dated, all of them, the same results. Something is happening you didn't learn. Same results. Time happened, but you didn't give yourself to learn. Amen. Amen. On Saturday, we are having a special uh, relationship. Uh -huh. Make sure you are here. Very important. Amen. Yes. Yes. At 3 p.m. I'll meet. Yes, it's exam number. If you're in family life, it's exam number. So 3 p.m. Make sure you are here. Yes, 3 in the in the afternoon. It's 3 in the afternoon. It's not in the morning. 3 p.m. Do you understand? I said 3 what? Make sure you are here. This year, personally, I don't mind if you don't show up for some things. No, I'm serious. This year, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not interested in commercial. No, no, no. If you are serious, you come. I just, God, I've taught you about time. What are you ready to exchange your time for? You are going to go on a date to somebody you don't even understand what you are dating. You don't understand what you are dating. So a new post, a date, a date without revelation. How will you go far in life? Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Very important. So we are asking you to come. Come and learn. Some of you are like, when you pray, you know it's the will of God because you sense peace in your heart. I will explain to you why you are hearing the things you are hearing. How have you had peace in your heart and the thing became a bombastic, it's a bombastic, a bomb. Peace, 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 you are in war. After all the peace, you are still in war. It didn't work. You are, oh, I have peace in my heart. I, I feel good. There's an inner witness. I am comfortable. Uh -huh. I will show you why that is a mistake. <laughs> Hallelujah. So make sure you come. Hmm? Buy the truth and sell it now. It means getting the truth is expensive. It's not coming to pay an offering. It means that you have to sacrifice time uh -huh, to hear the right thing. Sometimes the wrong things are free. You put on the radio, you hear wrong things. Sometimes you have to tune for the right one. Have you understood? Sometimes wrong messages that appear. Once in a while, God will use by mistake, you will open and something started preaching was correct. But many times, that's something that pop up is wrong. Are you understanding? Because truth is bought. But it's not bought with money. Isaiah 55 said that everyone who is thirsty, let him come. Everyone who is hungry, let him come. So truth is bought with desire. If you are thirsty, Proverbs 18, 1 says, through desire, a man shall separate himself. Desire is the currency for truth. If you desire to encounter God, you will meet him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here today? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You are not angry? No. All right. Now, the, the, the subject I'm about to begin in, it's a very heavy subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the basis of our Christianity is the cross. Yeah, it's the cross. If without the cross, we are not here. We can't be Christians without the cross. Amen. Amen. But I'll show you the picture of this story eh? so that you can understand why the cross is important to God. I want to show you a scripture. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. See what Paul wrote about the cross in the book of Corinthians, chapter 1. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. 
the verse number 17. Let's read it together. One to go. Praise the Lord. Verse 18, what I say? For us who are what saved, the cross is what? The power of God. That means that there is something in the cross. There is something in the cross. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See what he said again, what Paul was saying when he was, when he was giving his um, dissertations further. He says then that, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? The disputer. And he spoke about how that the preaching of the cross, verse 23, go to verse 23. Let's read, let's read quickly. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Next, next, next verse. Say, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And this preaching of Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God cannot be without the cross. So the cross became the means by which God's power and God's wisdom was manifested. Very important. Very, very important. So the cross is the means. In fact, verse 30 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30. Now, I read it very too much in the Greek. The Greek now says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, semicolon. In the original text, wisdom is actually composed of righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. It's not, it's not a list. It's one. Christ is made unto us wisdom. Because if you read it in context, righteousness and sanctification and redemption is introduced all of a sudden. But in context, he's talking about Christ, the wisdom of God. So he's saying to us that Christ Jesus is made unto us wisdom, semicolon, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So in that wisdom is righteousness, in that wisdom is sanctification, in that wisdom is redemption. So it means that in this year, as we go through, you understand righteousness through the cross, sanctification through the cross, redemption through the cross. Because that's what it is. I'm telling you, this, this is a very, it's a big message. But you see, like I said, when we were doing, and I'll, I'll touch on resurrected life this year. Now, when I was teaching on the body of resurrection, I told you that it's a message that has not been preached. But if you look at how Paul lived his life, he was stoned, he was beaten, um, his, uh, the, I mean, look at the things Paul suffered. Yet he says all these things are light afflictions. What body was he using? In death often. He was not using a normal body. That's why I told you in the, in the teaching on resurrection, this is your normal body cannot serve God. Mm. No, 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 it's not, it's not capable. This is your body. That's why many people are using this body to serve God. Every two minutes they fight. This body, you can be a Christian, halabora, ba, 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 ba. when you get out, you slap the taxi driver. You don't know what happened. This body, it cannot serve God. No! Yeah, Romans 8, verse 6. See what Romans 8, 6 said. Oh my God. See what the Bible says. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Now see what it says. For to be and to be spiritually. Now let's go to verse 3. See what verse 3 says. I'll touch on this this year. It's like the law of life but I'll touch it in a different way. Now let's read. One to go. What does it say? God sending his own son in the likeness of huh? Condemn sin in the flesh. Colon. Next verse 4. Verse 4. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Next verse. But they that have the spirit. Verse 7. Now jump to Fred verse 6. Now what is it? Uh -huh. Verse 7. This is the part. Now the word carnal mind in the Greek is the word sakikos numa. And no, the, the, the word sakikos numa means the mind of the flesh. The, the carnal mind is not sin. It's the mind of the flesh. Go back, go back, go. Oh, go back. <laughs> Verse 5. I'm not preaching this one, but let me just touch on it a little bit. 
Verse 4. Now let's see what he says. For the righteousness of the law might be, man, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Go back to verse 7. See what verse 7 says. But the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. Verse 8. Verse 8. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. This is unbelievers. Verse 7. This is a Christian with an unbelievers thinking. Verse 8. For they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 7. It is the mind that is against God, not the person. Verse 8 is the whole person. He's in the flesh. But in verse 7, he has the mind of the flesh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll teach it during the year. So you to help you. Because you see, it, that this is your natural way of thinking. So the, the word mind of the flesh, they are in the flesh, the natural person, the one who doesn't believe in God. He cannot please God. There is nothing he does by mistake that pleases God. There is there's nothing. No matter how good a person is, it can't please God. Because it's not even your righteousness, not your sin. Your righteousness is as filthy rag. Is it your sin? If your righteousness is like in Tomago, is it your sin? In fact, the Greek says menstruation cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word righteous. When the Lord was speaking in the book of Isaiah, he says, your righteousness is as filthy rag. Filthy is menstruation cloth. The cloth that in those times they used to clean blood. Yes, he said that's how your righteousness is. How good you are without God. It's like menstruation cloth. Mm. Jesus Christ. It's Lord. Hallelujah. The carnal mind is at enmity. What he's saying is that anytime you think with your flesh, anytime you think naturally, I'll show you an example and I'll preach it later on in more details. Simple example of carnal mind. When you see your friend going up, naturally you feel intimidated. It's a natural mind. That's the carnal mind. It's not, a, it's not a mind that is lasting. No, no, no. It's the mind that reacts to things naturally. Like we all went to school together. How come you are going to America? I'm still here. Natural mind. So when you see the person, you are hiding rather than celebrating. Can I mind? And they say that one is against God. Hmm. This year the cross will to kill it to kill the nonsense. Yeah. If you if you only listen to what I'm preaching, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. You will be fine. Look, chat, look, oh. the more I read the Bible, the more I realize that on the day of judgment, eh, it is true, God will be just. Do you understand the meaning of just? It means God would have presented every opportunity to have done well, but you decided to say no. No, 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 no. Yeah, on that day, ha, <laughs> ha. I told you many times, people, I've, I've done a lot of eschatology, uh, uh, sorry, uh, apologetics, and people come to me and say, oh, oh, prophet, so how about Muslims who don't know God? And they were born into it. And I said, listen, I know Muslims who don't pray, but they are Muslims. They don't do five times. They don't even fast, but they are Muslims. That tells you that even to take a religion is still a choice. You, nobody is born Christian. That is the mistake we do as born again people. The fact that your mother and father goes to church does not mean you're a Christian. So it means that likewise, even you who are born in a Christian house, you need to choose Christ. So everybody has a choice. Nobody will go to heaven or hell because they were born to something. It is choice. You must make a choice. And choice is the presentation of options. That's why the people who can't get the preaching, Jesus appears them in Saudi Arabia himself. And the moment you say that, it means also when the Lord is judging Muslims who had the chance to convert, he will tell them that, do you remember the dream you dreamt? Yeah. Do you remember the day you read about Isa? Oh, recently I was, I was checking some apologetics document and I went into the surah, that's the Quran, and it said in the surah, amongst all the prophets, Huh? There is one who resurrected from the dead. He had the resurrection power. Okay. Yeah, it's in the surah. It's in the Quran. From 33 onwards. The surah Maryam Arayat okay. is there. Then he said that in the same Quran, amongst all the prophets, Muhammad, Elijah, Moses, Joseph, all the people, there is none that is without sin except Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm serious. It's in the Quran. That's what I'm telling you on that day. The day I saw this, I was shaking. God said, Adam, when I tell you, I will be just on that day. I'm not joking. Everybody will have enough chance to have seen it, but they didn't, they didn't choose it. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Preach to your friends. Preach to them. 
Satan has treated the, uh, we are in a certain Christian that all of us, all of us won't go anywhere. <laughs> Jesus, I'm the way. He did. No. I'm sure this is, I'll touch on it. I'll quote, I'll quote, I'll quote from the Quran for you so that you see what I'm talking about. So preach to your Muslim friends. They don't know Jesus. If they know Jesus, they are reading him, but something has blinded their eyes. So one of the prayers you pray for Muslim brethren is that, Father, take the veil. Take the veil. Wherever they are, I know a Muslim cleric who was going to lead prayers at dawn. He was an imam on the way to uh, whatever to go and do his doctorate in Islamic study. He said, whilst he was about to lead a prayer, Jesus appeared. And he said, I'm Isa. He told me, he said, man of God, he nearly cost my life. Because he said, when I did that, they put me in a family meeting. And they said, if you are going this way, then we'll kill you. So he was on his way after church and some people gathered and they were looking for I think they swung and they missed him some strange way so one of them said in Hausa that let him go if we didn't get to do it let him go that's when he realized that the thing was a real thing <laughs> I'm saying this to bring your mind to something I did it's an impromptu announcement but I'm going to tell you right now if there's any Valentine's Day gift to give somebody it's salvation so next Sunday, we have brought fre- people have brought their first fruit. Some have sent it to their churches. Powerful. Next Sunday, bring the first fruit of your soul. The first soul you win this year, bring them next week. No, no, no. Let's tell them the love of Jesus Christ. Because today, the message I'm preaching, I'm going to show you the historicity of the cross. Uh-huh. Um, um, cross. No. Uh, uh-huh. But next week, Next week, I will show you the story behind the things Jesus went into, the, 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 the situation, and everything he fulfilled when he was carrying the cross. And when they nailed him, everything he fulfilled. So that anybody you bring here, they will know somebody has paid. And nobody can love you more than the Lord. So, on that wise, let's begin my message. <laughs> let's begin the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I love the word of God. Say, I love the word of God. Say, because I love the word of God, God increases my understanding. Even in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, I want to explain something very important that uh, when you get into the Bible or the doctrine of the cross, there's what we call the metaphor and the metony of the cross. Now, the word metaphor is to use um, metaphorical. One of the words any literature, metaphor, she's saying, in Bibusem, and metaphor, that's an idiom. Metaphor, how do you say it in Cree? I want to break it down. Uh, a metaphor. Who can explain? Who did English here? That's why people did English BS, they are hiding their face. They're like, oh, we were never taught. Okay, so literally, let me put it this way. Let me use this in application. So when we say metaphor, it means that anytime we talk about the cross, immediately your mind goes to sufferings. Metaphor. But when you use the word metonym, a metonym means that um, the law is replaced with Moses. So the Bible says, until this day, when Moses is read, but Moses is not a book, but the Bible says Moses can be read. So in metonym, what it means is that now the cross has now replaced a people. That means that when we say the metonym of the cross, we are seeing the people of the cross. We are talking of Christians. It's Christians who use the cross, who believe in the cross and its work. Amen. Now when I explain what I explain to you, um, there are so many arguments of people when it comes to the cross. Why do you wear the cross on your neck? If somebody was executed on an electric chair, will you wear the electric chair as a gold chain? All those kind of things. <laughs> I'm not here to preach for you to wear a cross. Neither am I here to preach that wearing it is also a sin. I'm just trying to explain to you that the cross has a beginning that predates time. I'm going to, I have some pictures I'm going to show you today. Because of what I'm going to show. Uh-huh. So you understand this. Now, let's go quickly to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Quickly. There is a very interesting name Jesus Christ is called. 
even in eternity. Now, so everywhere you see this name, remember the cross. Let's read together. One to go. Wonderful. See, from the lambs of the lamb slain, from the foundation of the world. Of the lamb slain, from the foundation of the world. First Peter chapter 1, the verse number 18. You are not redeemed with corruptible things. Uh -huh. Let's go there. Such as silver and gold. Verse uh -huh. from the vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers. Verse 19. But by his precious blood, the blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish and without spot. Colon. It means the sentence is not ended. Next. Who verily was foreordained before the that he might be now listen to the language that's being used here. He was foreordained before, but he was slain from. Ah. Ah. Passion translation. This year, may the Lord give you the understanding of the scriptures. Jesus name. The way you understand tree, you understand Zima. Now not the Bible. What the Bible? Somebody should say, what the Bible? Yes. It's a language you understand. Let's read together. One, two. So it means that he was chosen and, and destined for this. What is that this? chapter 2, the Bible says he was delivered according to the determinate counsel of the Godhead. Go there, Acts chapter 2. He said Jesus was delivered to Pilate according to the determinate counsel. So there was something God had determined. Are you finding it? Acts 2, Acts 2. Uh, yeah, verse what? 20 what? Find it, find it, find it for me quickly. Now, so when you read it, uh -huh, 23, good. Uh -huh, read it. He says, and he being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. That means that the arrest of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of Jesus, everything Jesus Christ went through, God had already written it and the heavenly counsel had agreed. So nothing in the death of Jesus was a surprise. If this is the case, oh, are you there in passion? Show passion. I want to show you something very powerful. Why is the beginning so serious? He said, this man's destiny was prearranged. For God knew that Jesus would be handed over to you to be crucified. That means that before Jesus ever came to be a fetus in his mother's womb, they had already written the story of the cross. The cross didn't begin in time. Mm. It transcends eternity. So he's corroborating what he's saying in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. That it had been delivered, it had been prearranged. It had been recorded that Jesus would go through the things. There's nothing like a surprise on the cross. Hallelujah. Are you here? So are we going this story? But notice what he said in Revelation 13 verse 8. Go there quickly. Revelation 13 verse 8. Now, he says now, he was the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. Now remember in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, when he came to the Lord's prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus is declaring a prayer based on an information that's already completed in the heavens. That means he has already died according to the will of God in heaven. Because he says that I will be done on earth, it means it has already been done in heaven. Oh. Oh. Do you understand why he, he made sure that everything he did was according to the book? I told you last week, your life is written. I'll show you a secret today. The increase of warfare is the opposition of what is written about you. Let me say it again. Anytime you are worrying for your life to manifest, it means you are going against what God has already designed your life to be. Because how do wars come? James said it. From your will. From your desire. That means that war is an institution that rises from opposing desires. God has his plan. You too, you want your plan. That's where war starts. 
I want. God said, no. I want. God said, no. It's not time. So it looks like your Christian life feels frustrating because you are always against God. Meanwhile, to God is supposed to be for you. But you are pitching yourself against him because you want your will. What happened in the garden? Adam's will was to be what God has freely made him. Then Satan joined in the fight. Because you see, Satan could not get Adam until it was a desire that was also in his heart. That's why I keep saying that some of the attacks, most attacks, are, in fact, all attacks are based on what you carry. But most of them are based on wrong desires that attract the enemy. It means the moment you correct what you feel, what you desire, what you want, Satan has limited access to you. If you are praying, Satan shows up. You know what he does? He says, okay, this guy likes praying. This guy likes fasting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a religious spirit of competition. When he hears people have done 100 days, I'll, I'll provoke it. So now, in the prayer dimension, they can't kill you with lust, but they'll kill you with fasting that is from the flesh. That's what Satan does. So anytime you are, so God tells you, this week don't fast. You are like, ah, it's an evil spirit. I bind you, I bind you. And you go. All of a sudden, you break down. And you are like, Lord, where were you? God said, I told you not to fast. But you thought you are more, you can't be more spiritual than God. One day, Leonard Ravenhill, who knows Leonard Ravenhill? Very wild revivalist. He had a prophetic word and went to Rejoiner and told him, Rejoiner, God said, go and play golf. What kind of prophecy is that? God said, go and play golf. Yeah, I'm telling you. Last year, I received a prophetic word that I have to learn how to rest. Yeah. So he got to a point and realized that, no, 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 no. If I don't take care, the people like Moses will kill you. Because if you, oh, you, if you are not picking calls, you are not minding people. No, no, if you follow that thing, sometimes you are, not, you are even feeling dizzy. Hello. And the people say, oh, daddy, sorry. Did I wake you up? <laughs> don't even say I'll call you back. Eh, please, <laughs> there's an issue. <laughs> they just said, oh, sorry for waking you up, but I will tell you the problem. <laughs> Since you are awake already, let me just tell you what is going on. <laughs> so next time you won't pick at all, or your phone is on flight mode, so that you can spend time with God. They said they have vowed that a retreat. Lie, lie. Tell your neighbor, lie, lie. <laughs> hey, I will follow God more than any crowd or demand. If you don't, I ain't if I like, be angry. Am I lying? Mm-hmm. When I keep the fire burning, God will bring you back. <laughs> You'll be angry for two minutes, but you know that ah, prophets can prophesy that. Right? I'll, be fine. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> and if I follow and I answer, call, 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 I'm not praying. The nice thing I give you advice is not the spirit of God. And you go. Because some of the calls you people call us, it's life and death. You know that. Yeah. If we say go and it's not God's so will, you are in trouble. Yeah. So we have to make sure God is the one saying go so that there's no trouble. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So it means it was already done in heaven. The matter of Jesus being there, it was already done in heaven. Jesus was slain from, and the word from is katabole. Hear this, it's going to help you. Katabole is the word thrust down or throw down. Katabole. Thrust down or throw down. And it's usually used in the Greek rendition to communicate the overthrow of Lucifer. That means that the moment Satan went to revolt against God in an attempted coup d'etat, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? As soon as Satan did what he did, can we go to Hebrews chapter 9? There's a scripture that blesses me there so much. The verse number 15. Mm. Hebrews 9, 15. Let's read together. One, two, go. Sixteen. Just go to sixteen. Uh-huh. Next, next. Just keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. Next. I want to show you something. Just go, go. Fine. Uh huh. This is it. Uh huh. Was dedicated without blood. Next. Next one. Next one. Don't worry. Next. Go. Let's go. Again. Twenty-one. Next one. 
Now, go back. Go back. Go to 21. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Next verse, 22. And without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Verse 23. It was necessary that the patterns of the things in heaven So can I tell you something? When Adam, before Adam showed up, and Lucifer went to fight God, and created confusion in God, they activated the death of Christ. So that things in heaven should be cleansed. That's why I said from the foundation, not the foundation of creation. The way foundation of the earth is not when earth was created. It was when Satan fell. That day it fell. God needed blood to cleanse heaven. So that the heavenly sacrifices, the heavenly what things themselves with better sacrifices than these. That's why, as soon as Jesus, no, I'm showing you the scripture. You know, you could have just preached it and boom, I'm gone. But I want to explain to you why the Bible says, from the foundation of the world, the moment Lucifer over, was trying to overthrow God and they sacked him from heaven, there was desecration in heaven. Why? He had gone to lie. And deceived one third of the angels. So there was lies and deceit. And the fracturing of the heavenly order. So God needed blood to patch things that are also in the heavens. And that was the day he said, Ah, my son, we must slay you. <laughs> for the things that are here. Are we here? <laughs> so the beginning of the cross predates what you saw in time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll give you time to meditate today. I'll really give you time to meditate because you need it. Tell your neighbor you need it. Praise the Lord. Amen. But when it came to the matters of the earth and Lucifer showing up on the earth, there was a need for the blood to be shed in the specificity of how God needed it to cleanse matters on the earth. How did that happen? Galatians chapter 3. In fact, let's go to chapter 2. Chapter, Genesis chapter 3. Remember when Adam fell, God began to curse Adam. How do you remember that? Do you remember that? When Adam fell, God began to curse Adam from verse 8, Genesis 3. As soon as Adam fell, God said, Adam, where are you? All those things. Now, if you listen to the indications of what God said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Then he says, thy sorrows, when it comes to childbirth, shall be multiplied. Now, he's seeing different kinds of things that presupposes that. Um, a curse is not necessarily how we see a curse in our time. Listen to what I'm going to say very well. I hear? Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Now, in the Hebrew, a curse connotes weightlessness. Something that has no weight. Weightless. In the Greek, blessing is the word eulogia, which means to say, speak well, to speak well. Anytime you speak well, you are blessing. So anytime you say, I'm doing well, that's blessing. How are you? Wonderful. Blessing. Why are you going to? Is it going to? Are you sure the exam is? Oh, God is going to make it work. Blessing. To speak well. Or, ah, have you thought of my friend, Kwabuna? Oh, Kwabuna is a wonderful guy. Blessing. I'll, I'll show you what it even means for God to declare his name. Have you noticed when God was meeting Moses, he said, I will declare my name. Was he going to talk? What was happening? I'll, I'll show you. What it means for God to declare his name. And Moses saw the declaration of the name of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, every time wonderful things were spoken, blessing, because it has weight. Now, recently, somebody even sent me a, a video of um, rice put in a bowl. And words, negative words, you um, nasty, foolish, wrong. Negative words were used. After two weeks, the rice that had negative words molded. Then the one 
that and in fact both of them molded anyways but the blackness of the one that received words was different from it's like the mold that grew in the rice that received negative word was a different species <laughs> from the one that received blessing no, no i'm serious what the world is controlled by words too. everything here is words because god's how god created it god spoke and it became so everything that will be must hear something can i say it again if you want to be rich, speak it. Don't say, oh, this year, by the grace. No, no, no. Everyone who pays first fruit. Who, look, first fruit is not a nice thing to pay. So there are Christians here, they've been Christian for 20 years. Fair? Fair what? <laughs> now, tight cry, we are not seeing top. Is this first fruit to your No. Why? They have never said it before. But as simple said, I will give my first fruit. And I will give a tithe in my first fruit. And I will, I will be sustained by God. As they said, it happened. On the 6th of March this year, we have World Wealth Conference. Um, it's not going to be an open service. You need to register to be part. When I say register, you're not paying. But you need to register because there are some things I'll share with you. This present day Ghana, if you go and talk about giving, by the time you realize you are online. So I want it to be a closed meeting only as if you want to be part, register. You want to change your financial status. You are believing God that in this difficult economy, God will give you grace to advance. I gave you a prophecy about farming. Somebody came on TV beginning of the year that if you can buy land and you have a land in your house, start growing tomatoes. Did you hear it? Yeah. Good. If like, don't grow your tomatoes. April onwards, you understand something. Yeah, because the rains are coming. You've not planted anything. The race has even started. You've not planted anything. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> yeah. This thing about diesel, I'm not a prophet of doom, but this thing about diesel, who, who is going, things are coming to be very hot. I speak as a prophet. But they don't know their God. Oh, so this is not the time to play this. You are, you are a Christian, you are not a Christian. If you like joke, you will see heat. Heat you have never understood before. Be serious, though. Serious. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I've told you that many every year plan that you increase. Everyone who I give an allowance to, every worker of mine that I have to bless, I've increased their salaries. I pay salaries. I'm telling you. I've increased it personally. Why? I have to. The economy is some way. I, I'm a righteous man. One of my people, I was giving myself, Daddy, please, no, no. I said, no, you need it. He said, no, Daddy, the thieves came. I said, no. The thieves came to my house, but Bible said that me, the owner, I will, I will eat and you are hungry. I'm cursing myself. So you must eat. I would rather go hungry. I'm telling you. Are you here? Yeah. So I'm not saying that you have plenty, but it is principle. Even if it's my last thousand and I need to pay you, collect it and let me go hungry. Because I, I, was, I was staying somewhere and I came to tell you, can you work for me? Hmm? So you were minding your business. I said, work for me. In any case, even if you write application letter, it is my acceptance that shows that I've taken responsibility. If you are here, you are in Ephesus, you have people who work under you, you have laborers, pay them first before you pay yourself. I'm serious. It's the principle of the spirit. And today, we didn't make so much money. So, um, go. Eh! The Bible said the Lord will show up in the night. Go and read James chapter 5. Come for a World Wealth Conference. So, everybody hoarding money, God will judge them. Amen. It's not me. It's in the Bible. Your workers are the people who get their salary first. You, your profit is secondary. No. I, I'm honestly, eh, I'm tired of this generation that says we are word people, but nothing about the Bible is how we live. Word person is not hearing the word, it's living it. What? Who can point you and say that? Charlie, this man, the way he deals with people is according to Bible. The way he talks about people is according to Bible. How he deals with conflict is according to So even your conflict resolution, biblical. Your, your, your financial um, you call a posture, biblical. Everything about you, there's a Bible posture. That's a man of the word. Not somebody who likes messages. <laughs> can go to a church, excuse me to say, and so we are people of the word. And the word is even 20 minutes. Hey! I, I should stop here. I have to deal. <laughs> we descend this mountain. <laughs> it's not a holy mountain, so I'm descending this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
So if you read the scriptures over here, I want to show you something very interesting. Why Galatians 3.13 said, Cursed is the man that hanged on the tree. Now, the word curse, in context to what God was telling Adam was, if you notice, um, um, go, back to, go back to Genesis. We'll come back here. Don't worry. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, the verse number 22, something happened. And this is what tells me the curse operates. The Bible says that, and the Lord said, Behold, man has become like us. Go to 21. 21 is what I want you to see. And the Lord, and Adam also to his wife, and the Lord God made coats of skin and clothed them. Follow. That means that right about the execution of the curse, God carries out a final act on behalf of Adam. God sows Adam's dress. It means that the curse is living your life without divine assistance. Because Adam is now going to till the ground without God's enterprise. Adam is now going to give birth without God helping him. That is what Bible calls. That is biblical case. When you live your life without God, so you can get one million dollars without God, you are under the case. Because look at God. Somebody has sinned. They want to sew a dress to cover themselves. And God is still sewing a dress for them. It means that how God instituted their life was that I will feed you manna. I will give you water, the rock. Anything you need, I will supply. Because I am the El Shaddai. Not a two, the place. But the moment Adam did this, he said, so you want to feed yourself. Because at first, Adam didn't need defense. He was defended by glory. But as soon as he falls, Cain has to give birth to children who create weapons. Because we are not defended again. So can I tell somebody something? Labor in the revelation of his righteousness. Don't hustle in the antiquity of your flesh. Amen. Thinking that when you hustle up and you sweat, oh, you can labor hard and you will still be poor. There is one that gathereth and has not. And there is another one that scattereth and has. That thing must be God. Your job is not, is not you. And the problem with the church is God gave us the miracle job and after the miracle job, we are using the human enterprise to keep it. That's why we are always frustrated. How come you didn't trust God? God gave you the job. Why are you not trusting God to keep it? Why are you not trusting God to promote you? But you got to a point you know what to do. You've got your masters. So you know your way around. So something that you would have needed God to help you, you didn't. Then now your, your boss is angry at you. Your boss is tired at your ingenuity because you've lost it. Joseph relied on God throughout his career. Even when he was made prime minister, he didn't say, I know what I can do. He still relied on God. Daniel Denise after Nebuchadnezzar, I got expertise. I have years of experience. So I know how to handle Dairos. In Dairos, he needed God. Belteshazzar, he needed God. So how come God gave you a miracle job? And he put God aside and said, thank you, sir. I can't take it from here. That is a case. That's why you will labor in a job. I was working to the glory of God in the civil service. A lady saw me one day and said, Sir, I want to work where you work. I said, Is that so? He said, How much do they pay? I said, Oh, um, if you are an undergraduate who is coming fresh, they have, they have mutated. When I started, it was 320 something. But you, if you want to do it, it's around 700. He said, 700? I said, Yes. He said, Ah, and you have a car? I said, Yes. And you dress like? I said, Yes. He said, 700 Ghana. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Why? Because of how I was looking. She thought I was working and where I get 5,000. It's called blessing. So by the grace of God, my first car, I didn't use salary to buy it. Mm -hmm. Somebody walked up to me, and I didn't have a church at that time. Eh? Somebody just woke up and said, man of God, please take my car. Jesus. It's blessing. That is the day I understood that your salary is not the issue. It is your spirit that's the problem. Mm -hmm. The salary is not a problem. No, 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 no. There are taxi drivers who make thousand a week and they are building houses. They pay you seven thousand, you are still broke. It means that you see there's something wrong. Can I tell you something? When you come for this finance course, I'll tell you something. I told you last time, huh? Many of you are working hard on your job when you should be working hard on yourself. When you get masters, they change your salary. That means it's not what you are doing, it is who you have become. 
You can do seven people's job in the office. If you don't have a master's degree, you'll pay you BSc. It is not what you are doing. It is who you have become. Add value to your life. Study. Read. Christian, hello. Ah. The Lord will do it. Eh, eh. <laughs> if we like, don't learn. <laughs> if the Lord will do it, then Joseph should have gone straight to Potiphar, Pharaoh's house. <laughs> but they made him do apprenticeship in somebody's house. How to rule prisoners. How to keep the penal system of a man's house in order. And the labor system. And they were making profit. And Potiphar said, I've been blessed because of this boy. So by the time he gets to Pharaoh's house, the grain and the seven-year economic problem is not intimidating. He has practiced for years. God will not send you where you don't have apprenticeship in. I'm telling you. That's why some of you can pray, pray, pray. God will never make you a doctor tomorrow morning. You have no apprenticeship in the field. So whatever field you want to grow in, you must create apprenticeship. Yes, sir. I want to start my own business. Who have you worked under? What culture have you developed? No matter how you are gifted, if you don't train under somebody, you will go nowhere. That means God even deals with knowledge. Mm. I banish the spirit of boring in boring. Yeah. You say you won't learn anything, you won't read anything, you are just there. God will show you. God will show you anything. Because if Moses is not an architect, will he understand the pattern? Oh. It's a seed that he built. Hebrews 8 5. And why? He is a military general, so he can lead three million people. That means that even for him to lead the nation, he had to practice in a, so, a, a military school. God will not put you into something you are, are a novice in. Go and read your Bible well. Go and truly read your Bible well. I've not also said make your academia the way God will do. No, I'm just trying to tell you that in any area you are in, increase your value. Because it's not what you are doing that will increase your salary. It is what you have become. You can, do, you, can do a, you can even do your boss's job, do his presentation for him. They will not give you increased salary. I'm telling you, you write speech for your minister. They won't mind you. If you don't increase who you've become on paper, forget it. Listen, I, I pray God will give me wisdom to give you. May God open your ears to hear. I want a cute guy. I want a guy with nice body and he's spiritual. What else when you're spiritual? And one pair. So it's like the very life you are living is opposite what you are praying God to go for. You don't pray oh, one pair. But then I want a spiritual guy who is cute. Cute so I walk and why Oh Jesus Christ. You want a cute guy. Me want a cute guy attracted to cute girls. No, I'm like, it's true. Yeah. No, that kind of story is only Cinderella. And even Cinderella is because of situation. So don't be wearing sackcloth and be walking and say, as for me, um, uh, then you tie your head like this and, and you are walking like uh, um, um, this and they gone in the temple of a uh, stiff like that. As for your bosom, say, ah, hmm, hmm, I want a cute guy. Which cute guy am I? Dress it. So when you smile, when a guy is walking, smile. When nobody is watching you, a lot of you ladies learn how to practice smiling. When you are walking like, is that how to come to church? Hey, I don't want anybody to talk to me. Hey, church is not the place to talk like that. Here, everybody can talk to you. Smile. What the fuck? It's a serious thing. When I was in secondary school, the phone one boy came. One of the, my roommate told me, said, guy, you for smile. I said, why? Because everything was wow, like I was snow. There's a moment when I enter, nobody tries to talk to me. Like, I just locked down. Blah. He said, I said, why? He said, oh, if something bad happens, even if they don't remember you were dead, they'll report you. <laughs> <laughs> because you look like somebody who can do bad. So I said, yeah. Hey. So I had to let's... Hello, how are you? <laughs> Learn how to smile. You can do it in front of your mirror. Every morning. <laughs> 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 smile practice somebody wants to say hello to you and that is your future husband but every day you are working like robocop like when they say hello hi are you going to heaven <laughs> are you in a hurry more than us 
the rapture will happen at the same time. <laughs> There's no early bus. <laughs> Every day you are serious. Amen. Amen. I, I told the volunteers at a certain meeting that God can't even give you a thousand member church if your pastors are only five. It's a wrong prayer to pray. Even your capacity to handle thousand is small. And you are saying, we have a thousand church. It doesn't work like that. Your confession must be commensurate to the actions and the plans you have put on the floor. They say, I'll build a house. Are you saving? Otherwise, you confess yourself you are frustrated. I, I say, I'll be, hey, hey. Angel being young, I'll be some power. Jai, you know. Stop it. Grow small. God will use me. How many books are you reading? My relationship will be powerful. How many relationship books have you read? Reading nothing. Just crossing your leg in your room. Like, bah, bah, bah. By all means. I, <laughs> if by any means. I know Papa. I mean, you know. If by any means. Where has Paul? Even when he prayed that prayer, God minded him. You don't feel like trying. They are lost in the spirit. So if you want to increase in a certain age, you posture yourself well. Sometimes there are things that we are all tempted to But sometimes I can see my children. My children's children that, eh, I don't want to give problems to these boys. Because there are some things that's hot in the blood. So, yeah, I'm serious. And some of you women, you want to marry some men whose their fathers were polygamous. It's in the blood. The day he says, hello, I love you. There's something working in the blood. So that you begin to burn. After first, second child, he wants another one from another person. A mojan. So because of that, me too, I know that I don't want to give a pattern to my children. This blood must boil for prayer. It must boil for souls. It must boil for the prophetic. So if you meet some of the prophets that are very wild, many of them, their grandmothers and grandfathers were men of God. There's something that has even transferred that makes it easier. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> It can be intense like that. Don't worry. Is the Lord having mercy on us? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So what was happening is this, that the moment man fell, he lost God as his dependence. That's why one of the greatest definitions of faith is total dependency on God. If you can fully depend on God. Of course God will use people. Of course God will use your job. Of course God will use situations. But he must be the first, as we understood last week, that hears the complaint. He must be the first that you discuss the matter with. God must be the first. Stop thinking a certain way. If you do that, you delay on life. 2017, I told God, I said, listen, I've prophesied, I've taught, I've led prayers, I've done everything that a Christian can do. It doesn't look like I'm a utility player. There, there must be an assignment you have for me. So, painstakingly, huh? 30th March 2017, even after preaching many years, I said, Lord, what exactly is my assignment? What is my calling? Because I don't want to run another person's race. The day God spoke to me, that's why I, I allow God to express his prophetic anointing the way he wants. Because before I wanted to prophesy by all means in every meeting by any means. But when God spoke, I understood that the word of God is part of my assignment. I cannot leave that and be a strict prophet. So if you don't hear, you'll be running something that's not designed for you. And you waste your years. And that one, when it's not your race, your energy of youthfulness, when it finishes, you are ended. You know, when it's your race, even in your old age, people seek you. When it's not your race, as soon as you lose energy, velocity, branding, and visibility, everybody forgets you. Because you were running someone's race. So, they now begin to seek others who are actually in the assignment and in their 40s are still standing. There are prophets in Ghana today. After 50, they are still prophesying. Yeah, there are other prophets. After 30, 40, they, they don't want to prophesy again. They've lost interest. And they are trying to preach, but it's not working. Because it's, it was not the assignment. How it's supposed to look like. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this year, try. If you are not a pastor, you are not a worker, at 
least three times in a year. Go on retreat. Huh? January, you have done your own. Your birthday, find one. Then before the year ends, go and find time with God. That God, this year is ending. Uh, what is happening? That's why you need mid-year retreat or something of that sort. Even office does retreat. Even companies do retreat to evaluate their program of work. You are just living. Hey, the fufu, you are just drinking soup. That's all. And watching news and going on dates. Yay! Keep on. Before you become outdated. <laughs> that was in the flesh. Let me continue my message. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yes. Very, very important. What is this tree of life? So then it means that now my supply, my defense, I've left the all sufficient panoply and I'm not def- depending on myself. When I wake up in the morning, I'm running my mind. Charlie, what can I do today? Who can I talk to to get this money? I've entered the realm of the case. So I'm stressing and toiling and every morning. He says, it's an arrow under the sun that I rise up early and I labor and I come back in the evening to eat the bread of sorrow. Why? The blessing of the Lord make it rich. And there's no Proverbs 10, and there's no sorrow in it. So it means that the moment the bread contains sorrow, it's not God's blessing. To eat the bread of sorrow means that whatever you are doing and eating is not from the blessing. It's from the curse. Is it Proverbs 10, 22? Find it for me. Yeah. The blessing of the Lord make it rich. Find it for me. Yeah. Proverbs 10, 22. And add that no sorrow with it. So if you are eating the bread of sorrows, it was the bread of cares. It was not the bread of blessing. You know what happens? Now, it means that when you labor and God gives you one bucket of water, because it is from God, when the bucket is finishing, you will top up. But when it is you who goes to hustle, when the bucket is finishing, you are not sure of the next source. So your eyes will be creaky, creaky. Who can I... Who can help me? Then the bucket to finish. Two days has passed. Three days have passed. That indication tells you that all along you were using your effort, not his grace. Because when it is God, manna, by the time you are waking up, the next one has come. <laughs> so some people can get miracle money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They get it when they need to pay a bill. Some way, somehow. The bill will be paid for or they'll scrape the fees or they'll say it's free. Why? Once I'm in blessing, it follows after each other according to every morning's renewed mercy and my dependence on that mercy. But when I step out, I say, oh, ah, right now, I get miracle money thousand so Charlie, I can hustle myself. As soon as you step into hustling, the flow stops. One day I told the couple, I said, don't take loan. They went to take loan. Before they married. And they, I, I, when they took, God said, tell us them. When they took loan, did anybody give them money? I said, please. When you took the loan, he said, before the loan, people were, he said, yes, daddy. People were blessing us. Blah, blah. As soon as we took the loan, pshaw, nobody. Not a couple. No, no, no. It's not God's wickedness. God, you have told God by your action. You can help yourself. So God said, okay, then continue. God, you force himself. Continue. How you want it to happen? Because if I hustle, God can give me car, house, plane ticket, all at the same time. But when I hustle, my years will produce the result. So by the time I labor enough to get a car, then I'm come to gather myself after spending 40, 70,000 on car. I'm starting from zero again to get a house. Then after getting the house, I have to labor again to pay fees. So by the time you realize every day you are stressed, and you are stretched. That's the case. I like the way some of you are quiet. Like, oh my God. Oh and I've been confessing, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. <laughs> you see, saying you are blessed and living like you are cursed are two different things. You can say you are blessed a thousand times. But if your conduct is in the curse, Somebody here. I'm talking about the beginning of the cross, eh? Am I on it? Hallelujah. 
So the moment this happened, and I'll show you why the cross was activated from the foundations of the world when Lucifer had fallen, how God did it in the remit of the earth. Now in verse 24 of the Genesis chapter 3 story, see what happened. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of what? Oh, come on. To keep the way of what? The tree of life. Now, let's read again. Read it again from verse 22. I want to read from verse 22. All right. Yeah, yeah. So he says there was a cherubim set that was put there. I was trying to get a scripture in Exodus that says that, I think from Exodus chapter, you know, 34, um, 35, 36, their instruction to build the, the tabernacle. And it got to a point where God now says from verse 35 of Exodus that they had to build a veil. Uh -huh. The veil was builded uh, soon at that time. But when they were sewing the veil, the veil that led to the Holy of Holies, the Bible says they embroidered the cherubims in it. But the cherubims didn't have a flaming sword. So, the veil was like a curtain like this. According to scripture, it was 40, 50 cubits high and 4 cubits thick. So, I don't know how to explain the thickness. Thickness means that, you see this cloth? This is the thickness. And the way 4 cubits is actually, uh, every cubit is 1.5 feet. So the thickness of the cloth <laughs> was almost six feet. That's the thickness. That's why it took about 60 to 120 priests to move it. It's heavy. It's heavy. This is the reason why when Jesus said that the last time, it tore from the ground to the top. It, was, it, it couldn't be a man tearing it. Oh. Look. That's why I say, you see, the, the solutions, the points are in the Bible, but we don't take our time to read it. A lot of you have read the Bible many times, but you never to notice the thickness. You got to the point where, you know, it's confusing. I don't blame you because 50 bots, 40 cubits. <laughs> right? <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> it's plenty cubits. It's, uh, my friend, uh, cubit, 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 cubit. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yeah. Okay. I'm just showing it to you from the Bible so that you can understand what I'm saying. Now, so the, the, the cloth that led to the Holy of Holies. I found it. 26 what? 36 8. Uh huh. That's it. 26 8 starts the various vials. 36 8 what? Uh huh. Uh huh. The tabernacle, fine twin, blue kettle, or have cannon work of the. With had a cherubims of cunning work made in them. Uh-huh. Next verse. All right. Then it said the length of it is 28 cubits, breadth of it is one curtain, four cubits. So the breadth, so the length of it is 28, sorry. It was 26 that spoke about 50 cubits. But 28 cubits was the length of it. Then the breadth is the thickness of the fabric. It says four cubits. But that fabric had only cherubims in it. It didn't have the sword. Because behind it was something called the ark. Chapter 25 talks about the ark. The ark is there. But this ark is the location where blood was poured. So it means that the sword was not activated because it was the, the action of the sword was what was poured on the ark. But in Genesis chapter 3, 24, no one had yet been killed. Nothing had yet been Sacrificed by man. So the flaming sword was moving to and fro. Zechariah chapter 13. Let's go there. No, no, the, the, the cross has been there since. I'll show you. Zechariah chapter 3. 
Zechariah 13. Also kind Bible. Oh, you kind the Bible yourself, my friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we go there quickly? Are we there? Let's read together. One to go. Go to verse 6. The house of my friends. Can I show you something in Matthew chapter 20? All right. No, is it 22, right? Matthew 22. Spoke about the feast that Jesus had called. Find it for me. Matthew 22. He gave a feast. Uh huh. He said they should go to the byways, highways. Let's read together quickly. Uh huh. Prepare the dinner. Uh huh. Next, next, next. Quickly. Made of light. Uh huh. Next, next. Quickly. I just want to show you something. A very interesting thing Jesus said. A remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Next, next. Uh huh. Next. Keep going. Where he went to invite people. Uh huh. Next. And go and find. Then he says what? So the servants went out to the highways, gathered everybody as many as they could, and the, and the wedding was finished with guests. Next, next verse. And the king came in to see guests, and he saw there a man who had not a wedding garment. Next verse. See what the king said. But they were strangers. They went to the streets, highway, byways, to gather strangers to come to the wedding. When the strangers came, the king is now addressing one person who is not properly dressed as friend. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6. Why is he? I'm just showing you this. I mean, this should give you a picture. Every scripture has a twin. This should give you a picture. It's the same house. Then he says, where did you get the wound from? I got the wound from the house of my friends. Judas betrays Jesus Christ, and Jesus says, my friend. John 15, you are my... So where is the wound coming from? His own disciples oh. are the ones who have wounded because they have, ab they have abandoned him, and they have sold him to, but they are his friends. Verse 7. Because if you understand this, you now understand when he said, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man that is my fellow, say the Lord of hosts. So God is saying, This man is my shepherd. This man is my fellow. It means we are co equals. He's talking about Jesus Christ. If you smite him, the sheep will scatter. So when he was dying, the disciples ran away. So which sword is he talking about? Genesis 3. 24. So when the sword was flaming, it was not awake. Mm. The sword was flaming. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8. Let's understand why it had flaming. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8. Let's understand why it has flaming. Second Let's read together. I want to go in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. So it means that the flaming fire is the justice and vengeance of God. So the sword is awoken. The flaming fire. It's the justice and vengeance of God. It's moving. That means that if this flaming fire is the vengeance and justice of God, Mondoria Sapi Carusa, Galatians 3 13, cursed is the man that hangeth on the tree. Now, my problem here is that apparently there's a very interesting definition of this word tree. In Matthew 3, verse 10, Matthew 13, verse 32, he says that that shrub, which was a master seed, grew to become a mighty tree, under which many creatures, birds and fowls of the air, had their abode. The word tree here, in the Greek, you can find it, is 1186. 1186, that's the Greek number for it. And that word there is dendron. Dendron. Who has the Bible to find it? Dendron. Matthew 13, 32. Are we right? All right, it's dendron, right? But when you get to Galatians 3.13, and Matthew 3.10, use it again. Um, he says, if a tree does not bear, he shall come and cut it down. Matthew 3.10, 10. 
Many words that are used here. Every tree that bringeth not. The word tree here is the word dendron. That means that in the Greek, the Greek word for dendron typically is the word for, the Greek word typically for tree is the word dendron. Now, if you are a science student, you know the myelin shirt and dendrites. The rooting system of your, the neurons in your head. It's like a tree. The root system of a tree. So, it's the word dendron. Now, when you come to, <coughs> Can I preach? <laughs> Don't worry. When we get to the application of the cross, uh, probably some of the things you know already will come inside. Let's just continue here. Let's, I'm building, because I'm telling the truth. If you don't take care, you might not even hear anywhere. It's, it's, I'm not boasting or, let me be careful how I even say it. Um, the beginning of the cross, I have not seen too many messages on it. That the cross predates time. Like, to explain it into details. It's, it's no. I'm just trying to show you that before it ever came in the day Jesus was put on it, it was already there waiting. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to show you today. It's the beginning of the cross. <laughs> so go back to Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. Cursed is the man or everyone that hanged on a tree. Now the strange thing about this word here, I think the number is 35, 86 or 36, 86. 35, 86. Now the word here, tree, is the word zulon. And strangely, it's the same word that was used in Genesis 3.24 in the Septuagint. Now in the Septuagint, there are many translations that are used for the word zulon. But if you check, for instance, if you go to the olive tree, the word olaya or olesia is from the uh, 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 um, 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 class Olesia, the oil. Olive. It's okay. The way people are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My faith. All right, all right, all right. Don't worry. It, the word he had us use is the word Zulon. And Zulon is the same word that was used in Genesis 3 24. So what the Bible is saying now is this, that the flaming sword, the flame is the vengeance of God, the sword is the justice of God, but the tree of life actually is the same word that is used in Galatians 3.13. So the Bible is now saying in Galatians 3.13, cursed is the man that hanged on the tree of life. That means that all of along, the angels were blocking the entrance to the cross. Are we here? The angels were blocking the entrance to the cross. So it was not wickedness. It is the method and the man who was going to be qualified to go through the cross that God was waiting for. Aye, 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 aye. If you are struggling with this, um, Genesis chapter 1, the verse 14 says, and God created... On the fourth day, God created the stars, the moon, the, the sun, and, the, and the, what do you call it? The, the sun, the moon, the stars. And the Bible says, they were there to be for what? Signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now, they were supposed to tell a story. For which reason, Genesis 15, God brought the constellations and showed Adam. Now, in this constellatory dem um, demarcations of God, there are major constellations. Some have extracted some for the 12 zodiac signs, but they are beyond 12. So, this Capricorn, Zacrito, all those things are there. But if you check the signs, the problem with God in this matters where people were moving in astrology, not astronomy. Astrology is the study of stars to control the destiny of man. Astronomy is to understand the stars, to tell the times and seasons. So that when the wise men saw the star, they knew that a king was born. Astrology is the study of stars to control the lives of people. So people say, I'm pieces, I'm this, I'm all those things. So that's like, we, we don't do this, we, we don't date this, uh, brother, uh, my friend. <laughs> and you find out that people are comfortable asking each other, what is your star? And one word telling you speak in the Holy Ghost. What's your star? What's your sign? Huh? Lord have mercy. And some of you go into the periscope. It's a, it's a horoscope. Uh, you go, horoscope. It is a horoscope. Horoscope is a horoscope. 
So it will write, today you are going to enjoy the week, blah, blah, blah. And you, you are believing that more than the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor the way you are quiet, you are a suspect. You have, you have read it before. Those days, I, I don't remember last time I read newspaper. There was a newspaper called PMP. PMP. It was in PMP. <laughs> People and places. PMP. Newspaper. So, he said, you're for science and season. Now, do you have the picture? I sent a picture, Kelo, I sent a picture, the space, the Hubble telescope. There's something at the nucleus of the, uh, of the Whirlpool Galaxy. I want to show you. The Whirlpool Galaxy, the nucleus. Have you seen this? This is space. There's a cross in space. That's, now, I intentionally left the name the Hubble Space Telescope. You can Google it when you go home. The nucleus of the, of the Whirlpool Galaxy. There's a cross there. So the heavens declare the glory of God and the feminine show his handiwork. Day unto day they utter speech. Now, look, if you will get to heaven and God will tell you, listen, the stars were telling. Romans 1 says, so that nobody is without excuse. Romans 1 said, the creation, it tells of his Godhead. So that nobody is without It's in space. This is unbelievers who took the picture. So it's not a Christian editing. That's why I left the reference here. So you can check it that it's not this um, uh, Photoshop. It is actually there. As time goes on, I'll probably bring you the Hubble's um, sounds of space. There, there's a star. It's called the Pulsar. The Pulsar. It has a machine gun sound. Yeah, it has in space. So you think when you enter space, it's silent. You can hear sounds. I will show you. I'll bring you that video. I have to bring it. I played it one time at a retreat for some people. I'll bring it. That day I wept when we were worshipping. You know why? Because they were. it's like the the, the, the music symphony of the heavens. So while the stars are making sounds, the whales are also doing, Woo! the horses are also neighing, and the chimpanzees. So when you add all the sounds, it's a beautiful sound to God. The heavens declare. Listen, you will get to heaven and realize that you have wasted opportunities. God is too real to be playing this hide and seek, hocus pocus games with. Be serious. Be serious. By the grace of God, when I teach you, you realize that, excuse me, say, I'm not a dollar. I'm not a fool. So if I'm telling you this God is real and I take him crazily, you better be serious. It's not because we have nowhere to go or have nothing to say or we have nothing to eat. That's why you are preaching hot. There's realness in this thing. And every day I see it, I shake. I say, guy, 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 guy. If you have shown me all this glory, then my judgment is greater. Because I know too much to live anyhow. It's in space. That's it. Can I show you another thing? Now, Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1, uh, the verse number 8, go there. <laughs> I sent you another one. Too. I think that's the last two ones I sent you. Do you have it? The last two ones I sent you. No, don't put it yet. Wait, let's read it together. Let's read it together. I want to go. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning. Say it, the Lord, which is... Do you have the YLT translation of this? YLT translation. Let's see if YLT tried for us. Okay. It still kept the Greek. Now, in the Hebrew, Jesus was speaking. And he says, I'm the Aleph and the Tav. I'll show you the pictogram of the Aleph. Put the Aleph there. It's red. Put it there. Put the picture of the Aleph there for me. Aleph. This is one of the last ones I sent you. Father, grant them grace. Okay, they are come to show, show us. That's their left. Their left is the head of an ox. So Jesus said, I'm the ox. Can you put the tav there for me? The tav. That's the tav. And the tav is the mark or sign of a covenant. So in space, God has covenanted with the earth. That's why that mark is there. And the tav is also the cross. So Jesus said, I am, when he says I'm the alpha and omega, he says I'm the bull and the cross. I'm the bull that will be. Oh. Oh. Get what I'm talking about. So, already part of his title is the cross. <laughs> he is also called the cross. I told you, metony, metony. He is also the cross. I am the aleph and the tav. I am the ox. That's why I said, take up your cross and follow me. I will show you something very interesting. Between the cross, the patibulum, and the ox, which is connected to the yoke. We are coming there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Let's go. Are you here? <laughs> are you enjoying the message? Yes, I know some of you when they say beginning of the cross, I'm like, what is prophet going to preach about again? That I don't already know. Thank you very much. Yes, you are the international doc document of the co co concordance. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I want you to understand something very interesting about this. The word aleph means a bull, an ox. The word taf is the cross. In this case, it's like an X. You know, different modern, this is a modern writing from palace, palace when they went to, um, what do you call it, captivity. This is the pictograph originally, and this is it. Now, do you have a picture of Exodus chapter 12? Get me that picture. I know you have it. You showed it to me some time ago. I know you have it. Very interesting. Now, the Lord said in Exodus chapter 12 that they should paint their doorpost with their blood. Do you have it? Find it for me. Find it for me. When you find it, give me a thumbs up. Then I'll, I'll come back to it. Now, quickly, let's turn our Bibles to, oh, my Lord. Say, there are things in the Lord. I like the way you said it. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Amen. So, actually, when God had put the flaming sword there, he was saying that this is reserved for somebody who will walk up to this tree of life and redeem it. Because man has eaten of a tree. And that life is fed by what it ate. So for that life to be terminated, it must be hung on the tree that gave it life. You do you understand? What I'm trying to say is this. He is saying that curse is every man that hangs on the tree of life. But it is that same tree that man failed to eat and went to eat the wrong tree that gave him the wrong life. Are you here? Yeah. So now God is now come to create a new system that remember what I define curse as. Man using effort to come to the standard of God. So it means that anybody that comes by his own effort, oh, oh, can I say this? That's why when Jesus was about to die, we see the first time he is separated from the father. Mm. My God, my God! Why has thou forsaken me? It means he's alone. Yes. He has become a curse. He's alone without God's assistance. Mm. So because of that, he's now a curse for man. He is now the alone man doing it on his own strength. So when he is done, you can't do it by your strength. Oh. You are ready? Let's go there. <laughs> oh no, this is not showing what I'm looking for. I wish we had the other picture. Now it looked like something like this, but the picture I'm looking for, the blood drops to the floor. The blood drops to the floor, so it draws across when you add up the thing. You just go off right now, so that they don't get confused. So I put the pictures are strong in their mind. You just go off now. We'll find that picture. I'm preaching it. And next week I'll probably touch on that. Now, so what I'm trying to bring your mind to is that Jesus now became cares for us. So it means that the effort, the, the method, the ability to do it alone becomes Christ. He does it alone for us. We can't do it alone. It took God to do it alone. Because no man can do this alone. By no man's strength shall he prevail. That's why he became a curse for us. I repeat again, if you demarcate curse to this basic unit, you understand that a lot of the things you don't think is a cursed thing, you are working in the curse. You are doing a lot of things without God. That's why there will not be you. Of course, we we'll understand the rest of God today. It's not, uh, oh, as we go on in this series, it's not sleep. It's not be idle. It's depend. Depend means he will do for you in collaboration. All things are possible, not by God, with God. Not by God, with God. His name is Paracletus, assistance. Not takeover. Assistance. So the rest of God is not laziness. It's an active engagement of God in matters you could have done without him. So that he leads and guides you in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Then he directs your path. So the way you didn't acknowledge, you were not entitled to direction. So in the way you acknowledge, that's where he speaks. The one you don't acknowledge, he's quiet. Some of you think you can marry without God. 
That's why you are always fighting. But you are Holy Ghost filled. Because you are not acknowledging him in that. You are trying to date without God. You will date. You will try. Nobody will mind you. Acknowledge the Lord. Lord, I am single. I Adam slept. You gave him his wife. No. Lord. 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 You gave him his wife. And the Bible says, it's not Adam. Listen, it's not letting me sleep. <laughs> because the Bible didn't say Adam went to sleep. God put Adam to sleep. It is God's action that made Adam sleep. Not Adam who went to sleep. So if you, you are not acknowledging him in all things. Kabaru kapaskiata. Lord, they've given me revelation for the year. How is the year going to be? As you pray to God, you'll be shocked. Sometimes they are most innocuous, most inconsistent, most inconsiderate instructions. And when I say inconsiderate, not because he's wicked, but inconsiderate because they are not even things that cross your mind. You tell that. So now pray at 12 every day. You're like, Lord, why? And you think it's just an isolated instruction. It's connected to what they told you the year will be. And you're not praying. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Make sure every quarter you do a retreat. It's not your mind. It's the Lord telling you something. Do you think your body likes to fast? No, do you think this body, do you think it likes to fast? Even the best of men of God, it comes in. Jesus even said, after the 40th day, he hungered. Even Jesus, who is God, was hungry in a fast. Is it you? Somebody went to fast 40 days, 40 nights. After that, he died. Obedi, eh, fufu, and abenkwai. He died. Because I'm sure Ruth, as he was at the retreat, he was thinking of the fufu, a preprensa, and the, and the apple of it. Do you know apple of it? Perirenko, you are mm, like, into all bumper in our dream fufu. And tea. As soon as he broke the fast, in Jesus' name, pop. Because all the Have you ever fasted in your dream of the food before? Yeah, yeah. That type of When you wake up, you know this one is not a devil. It is you. You are hungry. You are hungry. He's the Alpha and Omega. So the next time you sing, He's the Alpha and Omega, it means He's the bull that will be sacrificed on my behalf on the cross. Do you know the name of Jesus is also Amen? Listen, respond. Though. When we are preaching, respond. Oh, this year you understand a lot of things. Some of, you, some of your miracles was just in a response. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. It's, no, I, I mean, I don't like teaching those things like you have to respond when the pastor preaches. If you don't tell it comes to ritual, there's no revelation. That's why I take my time. So when you understand the revelation, his name is Amen. amen. Revelation 3.14. Look at the name. Look at the name. It's there. That saith the Amen. That saith the Amen. His name is Amen. Jesus' name is also Amen. So when you say Amen, it's like the name Jesus. Amen. 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 It means by Jesus it is sealed. It means by Jesus this will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I said amen. 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 When you see me say amen, it's not because I want you to respond to what I'm saying. I'm mentioning someone's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But nevertheless, let's just get into the history proper. What brought the <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we have a journey this year. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, someone was like, I was on a cross. But this after one month, you are done. <laughs> you have no idea what the cross is about. No, you have no idea. In this teaching, I will show you how to forsake your friends to take your cross. How to forsake your family. No, I'm serious. People have not understood it. What it means to forsake your family to, forsake, to take the cross. It's not, it's not denying that they are family members. No. It's beyond that. It's, no, it's truly beyond that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he's saying to us that according to Galatians 2.28, now you cannot live the life Christ lives without crucifixion. That's why he said Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ nevertheless. Can you go there? Galatians 3.20. Uh, 2.20, sorry. I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live. Can we go to passion? So we can understand some of the words that you say. Sometimes the nevertheless is heavy for some of us. My old identity has been co-crucified with the Messiah. No long, and no longer lives. For the news of his cross crucified me with him. Now the essence of his new life is no longer mine. Of this new life is no longer mine. But for the anointed one who lives his life through me. That means every morning I wake up. It's an opportunity for Jesus to live through me. 
Tell me how this will make you sin. Tell me how this life will make you tempted. Yeah. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith. So it means that crucifixion is the only way to live the God life. Without crucifixion, you can't. I just showed you. The flesh and the flesh of the mind can never understand the ways of God. Somebody insults you and the Bible says, don't react. Tell your other chick. I mean, explain that thing to you. I explain what it meant. Because apparently, you see, I say, when they slap, come, Mali, come. When they slap your sleeve on one cheek, turn the other. No, in the Hebrew, it's not like that. The Hebrews don't slap this way. They slap backwards. Yes. Check it. They smote you. Go and check all Hebrew. They smote you with the backhand. So he said, when they hit you like this, turn the other one. So it's a proverb. It means you're already in space. <laughs> we understand it. There are parables. And it's all part of the cross. No, I'm serious. These are the things when you see eh? People ask you, so how are you able to live this Christian at 20 something? Yes, it's, it's a cross. If you understand the cross, this thing becomes an easy work. Amen. Because you, the, remember the law of, this, of life? Yeah. Good is inside you. Yeah. But the good you want to do, it's like you remember, ah, the church told us to say good morning, Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> it's just been a while. Wow, wow, wow. Like, you've forgotten. That you have to say good morning. <laughs> Last week I said, before you sleep, make sure you and the Lord have discussed your day. Some people did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they were pressing their phone. Thursday, they were Instagram live. So without the crossing, this Christ life will be hard. That's why the Bible says, this is the power and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God to live the Christian life is a cross. The power of God to live is, is this. And it, I told you, it is not literal. It's not putting a cross on your chest. That people put a cross on your chest and still come with a gun. Some of the women suffocate the cross. Yeah. The brothers are suffering. Have you seen them? So it's not about cross. Oh my God, I... You can't even see an unbeliever with a diamond cross and it's a, it's a show. It is not. That cross on your chest is not a cross in your heart. Because those days you used to watch Dracula movie. Then one exorcist to take one big Bible like that and hold the wooden cross and say, Dracula, Dracula, Dracula. They will beat you. The devil will tell you that that's your cross. We have it in the marine world. It's lying on the table. Yeah, you can go to a, a babalao, you can go to a, a shrine, and the man is in white garment with yellow candles and red candles, and there's a cross on this table. It's not that cross you are talking about. You are talking of the applied cross. Amen. Amen. <laughs> are, you, are you here? Are you sure? So quickly, let's get into it. Now, I, I sent you a picture. Did I send a picture? Let me see if I send a picture. I'm going to send you some very gory pictures right now. So please. Yes, 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 you need it. Some of you knew some things. I did be in when you so kakra. We are some no doors, do do. Man, I mean, I mean, image is in Jinja when you so kakra. Tell your neighbor in Jinja when you so kakra. If you don't understand what I'm saying, tell your neighbor, Google it. It means let, in literal terminology, let it stand on your eyes. That's what it means. Hallelujah. All right, are we here? Okay. I'm going to show you something very interesting about the cross. Oh, I didn't send you that one. Okay, so somewhere I don't want to. Okay, I, I think the Holy Spirit didn't want me to show you that one. Um, I have it, but I don't think I'm going to send it. I'll send it probably next week. Probably next week. But there's something that was done many, many years ago. Now let's get into the history of it. Somewhere around um, 12, 13, up to 1205, 1203 BCE. Now they say it's BCE, before current era. Uh, but in old terms, it's also BC, before Christ. There are some people who use a certain method of the tree to kill, called impalement. Impalement. Now, that method was, excuse me to say, they, they send a stick and they sharpen the edge through your rear. And it comes all the way through your vital organ. Control yourself, please. I'm preaching. It goes through your rear, comes through your vital organs, and comes out of your mouth. 
Well, I've forgotten which apostle was impaled. One of the apostles was killed like that. What? Andrew. Uh, okay. No, Andrew was killed on the cross. Andrew, Andrew was killed on the, the, on the Andrew cross. There's a cross called St. Andrew cross. Uh, there's one of them. I've forgotten whether it's Thaddeus or Bartholomew. They were impaled. So the, the thing went through their mouth. Uh huh. Don't put any picture of impaled. I know you have. Don't put. I didn't send it to you. Uh -huh, so don't worry. It's with me. I realized I didn't send it. So the Holy Spirit told me not to send it. We'll touch on it next week when I'm touching on the. The, the next week we are doing the survey of the cross. Say the survey of the cross. You know that song that says, When I survey the wondrous cross. So next week we'll survey. We'll survey the dimensions. We'll survey everything on the cross. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So it's, this, is, this is the real Valentine message. Wow. Uh -huh. The Christian Valentine is not. It's not it's, what's that? Heart. It's not heart. It is a cross. The love message of the Christian is a cross, not a heart. Amen. So next week we'll touch on that one. But I'm just giving you the history quickly so that, and this was done by the Egyptians uh, um, and the Ramses, you know, Seti, all those kings. They, they did impalement in their time. That's how they punished people. And then somewhere around 701 BCE, there came a certain king called Sennacherib. When the Assyrians invaded Israel and all that, they killed people um, through impalement. And um, that impalement was also done at the entrance to put terror in the lives of people. But their impalement was not through the rib, it was through the rib. So they send you sideways and they take the thing through your mouth. Uh -huh. and, but of course, the way you are killed, it's the, the thing goes through your vital organs. You'll die early. Uh -huh. So that had not, but it was the beginning of it. Now that system, let's go to Esther chapter 8 verse 7. Something very interesting is there. It was used at that time. I'll show you something. In the days of Xerxes, the Persians. Esther 8 verse 7. Gallows. Who has ever known the meaning of gallows? To be hanged upon the gallows. Who ever knows the meaning of gallows? NIV. Let's see how NIV put it. Let's read together. I want to go. Is that? Wait, wait. Please try NLT too. NLT. Uh -huh. Let's read it together. Good. That's it. So apparently, Haman wanted to kill Mordecai by this means. He wanted to impale him and Mordecai. So they killed Haman by the impaling on the pole. So the word gallows is a little bit tricky. So in the King James, they hang him on the pole. But the hanging on the pole was the stick went through him. That's what it means. See, please, are you understanding? I want to show you why, where this killing on the tree thing came from. Uh -huh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Are we together? All right, so that's how Haman wanted to kill Mordecai. And Bible says that thing he built for Mordecai, he was killed on it himself. He was impaled on a pole. And of course, that's the Persians. Um, and somewhere in 479, something happened. 479, something happened. Um, there was a Persian general who killed by nailing a person to a plank and hung the person on a tree. So the person nails you to a plank and hanged him on a tree. In 479 BC, there was a Persian general that did that to one of his enemies upon um, they are invasion into the so many times in those times, um, a person was killed, then they hung the person on a tree. Uh -huh. So they were already killed and hung on a tree. But after a while, in classical Greece, through Alexander the Great, uh, he began to institute the system of crucifixion. But his system was not like the Romans. You know, at that time, he was doing what this Persian general did. Uh -huh. So Alexander the Great over 2,000 people. He, he, he impaled them. Yes. <laughs> he impaled them. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, God has saved you. <laughs> Amen. So, Alexander impaled over 2,000 people. Now, at this time, this Alexander had done something very interesting. When he instituted the system of impalement, 
Um, the Romans came during the Latin Renaissance. So when the Romans came, the word Latin is, is instituted by the Romans. Now, these Romans during the Latin Renaissance brought something interesting because they studied the cross and the system of killing and they, they, they made a system out of it and it was mainly for torture. Now, if you enter the antiquities of the cross, there's something called the Egyptian or Phoenician cross. That's the cross that has the ank. So most people tattoo that thing. It's like a cross with a circle at the top. That kind of, and it also has a different one where it's like a circle with a plus in it. That was a symbol of the worship of the sun god. Now around this time, when the Romans also came, of course, because of various intermingling of religions, um, it was the same person they were worshipping, but they had a different name. So the, 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 the Assyrians and uh, Ashtoreth and Baal time, Baal and Ashtoreth and all those people, they mentioned a certain guy called Tammuz, who was the sun god. That in, in, in Greece, he was called Zeus. But if you even check uh, Revelation chapter 3, when we spoke about Titeria, the synagogue of Satan, the Satan there is the synagogue or the temple of Zeus. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, when we enter into those things, we'll get into that. Um, the word Titan is from the word Shiatan in the Hebrew. And Shiatan is the name for Satan. So, clash of the titans. The word titan in Greeks is actually the word of Satan. Yes, that's how come Zeus slept with human beings and gave birth to demigods. It's the story of the angels coming to sleep with men. Uh -huh. Number two, um, you need to understand ancient texting and how it operates. When the Jews were under captivity, the Sumerians actually um, understood some of their culture because if you have to check their, their system of civilization, you will notice in even the writings in the Bible and everything they were doing, Many of them were actually independent of the practice of the nation. So some of the stories that the Sumerians wrote about a great flood that came on the earth were borrowed stories. It's, it's similar with the Quran. The Quran came way after the Bible, but similar stories that link up to... Uh, because the Bible was written around 300 and something before Constantinople began. Then when Constantinople began, uh, the city of Constantine, there arose Muhammad, who brought... Saladin and all the rest to come and invade in the Crusades in Jerusalem and took over the Holy Land where Palestine has its place, Israel has its place. Uh -huh. And that's where the Quran was released. That's why even in the Quran there are references made to Mary and those who do not understand anything in this Quran should go to the people of the book, Bible. And so there's a reference to the Bible in the, even in the Quran. So it tells you a whole lot of things in terms of the textings of these matters. Now, I'm not going to the history of this. Listen, if you believe in Jesus Christ, follow. <laughs> no, I'm just saying this thing so in case you meet an argument, you know what to say. That's why I'm even going to this extraterrestrial. <laughs> Did I say extraterrestrial? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wave your hands to Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Yeah, today I won't, I won't, I won't overload you, so I'm just ending with... Now overload you. I'm serious. I want you to, it, I want it to sink into your spirit. Today is more of history and we are just on a journey. So next week is more of the, the experience of the cross. So don't be, give me ideas. Is it my battery? Okay. If it's not my battery, let me continue. All right. So um, around this time, something happened in the, uh, what do you call it? Paul's quote of that scripture. Now, when Paul was quote, quoting it in, um, it says, as it is written, cursed is the man that hangeth on the tree. It was the same scripture that was used in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22. Uh -huh. But because of what was happening in their day, Paul, Paul shifted the word a little bit. See what it says. Uh -huh. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 21, verse 22. Let's read together one to go. So notice something that's happening here. I wanted you to see this very well. Next. Verse 23. So hold it. 
So if you read this text and you are in a hurry to go to what it's not saying, you will say that, go to verse 22. He is talking about killing you on a tree. No. He says, he that has committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, he is already dead before he hangs on a tree. That's what he's saying. He has been put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. So what you are hanging on the tree is his corpse, not his person, not, not the punishment of the cross. So now because of this interpretation, Paul now said crucified on the cross. But I'm just showing you a, a picture of where that scripture came from. So in the Jewish, and I, I'm saying this to bring your mind to something. In the Jewish put to death, remember Dr. George mentioned it, it is stoning. In the entire book of Deuteronomy, he speaks about stoning as capital punishment. It's not crucifixion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So that's out of the way. So that someone's questions will be taken out of the place. Now, this system of the cross that Jesus died on is called the crux. C-R-U-X. The crux. You get the word crucifixion. That's the action of killing on a cross. You get the word crucifracture, the breaking of the leg on the cross. And this word crux speaks of the cross. Remember I said the word excruciate. X is out. Cruciate is cross. So excruciating pain is out of the cross kind of pain. So you know you have done play the word. <laughs> Nothing is excruciating. <laughs> we got to the standard of the cross. Amen. Amen. All right. So quickly, let me just touch on some things I'm going to mention, the history behind it, so that now the Romans, however, unlike the Jews crucified um, by they killed by their capital punishment was um, crucifixion. But that capital punishment of crucifixion was not even common, strangely. When I say not common, it was not that you won't see pictures of it. It was not common as in, it was the last resort on many matters. Before you are put on a cross, there is something you have really, really done. Okay, so there was a man called Marcus Crassus, Crassus, sorry, Mark, Marcus Crassus, in the time of 70, um, 73 BCE, 71 BC, in the time of the, the servile rebellion of the slaves. And there's a series you've all watched, Spartacus. Spartacus. Some of you have heard of it, some of you have watched it. Now that Spartacus was an entity in the time of Roman rebellion in 71 BC, that's before Christ. And this guy went on a rampage, killed his master and all that. And when Marcus Crassus found out he arrested over 6,000 slaves and crucified them on the place called the Via Appia, where you have the Appian Way, from Naples to Rome. So Appian Way is a, is a, is a Rome, Roman word, which means to say the Via Appia. V-I-A is a, is, a, is a Latin word. V-I-A is a way. V-I-A is a way. Via Appia. So on the Via Appia, they crucified them, 6,000 men, all the way. And they left them for many days to decay and rot as a deterrent to people. Now in Roman uh, penal system, there was the upper class judgment, lower class judgment. Upper class judgment, you die by decapitation. So the highest form of punishment for the upper class was by decapitation. And the decapitation was because of treason. If you commit treason, you are, your head is cut, cut off. Now, lower class, if you also commit treason or whatever crime you commit, it can be a fine or a fine class, something called the Venatio Games. And the Venatio Games, what they do is that they lift you up and put you in an amphitheater and release animals to come and chew you for the amusement of the people around. That's the games. But crucifixion was not done to Roman citizens. The only time you crucify a person in Rome was a slave. So for Jesus to be crucified, he made himself of no reputation. So he died like a slave. That's why he was obedient even to the death on there. Because only slaves died this type of death. 
So it was very emphatic the things he was saying. I'm giving you the history so you can understand the scriptures that are used. So he can give you. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is what God is trying to say. Very emphatic. Very specific. So Paul, because he was a lawyer in Rome, died by decapitation. Jesus was a Jew who had been submitted to Rome but was given the vilest death sentence. Crucifixion. And that crucifixion was only done to slaves who killed their masters. So if you kill your master, you are considered to have carried out a treasonous act. Now when they come to the house and they ask everybody who killed the man and no everyone is quiet, everyone will be crucified. And many Romans did not like that because they felt it was waste of resources, wood, nails, iron, manpower. So it was actually, that's why when Pilate lashed Jesus, he thought it's enough because it's, it's, it's monetary. It costs the state money. <laughs> and they are slaves. So what is their benefit? Please, are you here? I'm, I'm bringing your mind to something very powerful so that you can understand how this cross looks like. And number three, I'll, I'll break this myth to worry you, but it's the truth. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 that uh, um, wherefore, when the animals uh, were burned, that sanctified, go there, Hebrews chapter 13, the verse number 11. Very powerful scripture. It says, when the bodies of the beasts which are brought forth to the sanctuary are burned without the camp, he says, next verse, verse 12, he says, therefore Jesus also that he may sanctify the people by his own blood suffered without the gate. Verse 13 let us what? Without the camp bearing his reproach. Now, if you look at this statement very well, you will notice that even in Israel, there was the camp of God which was moved out of the midst of Israel. And when it was moved out of Israel, close to Israel was the Mount Sinai and Horeb. It was close to them where they dwelt. Yet God didn't ask for the tabernacle to be put on the mountain where Jesus was to be burned. It was without the gate. I'm going to say something that will worry you by the truth. Um, it seems as if, according to archaeological findings, Jesus didn't die on the hill. He died on the street to the hill. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. I know. Anyone who has been to Israel before, when you go to Golgotha, there's no cross on it. It's in front of it. Because the way he was killed was to serve as a deterrent to the people who entered the city. So there's a road right in front of Gogota. He suffered without the gate, not on a hill. You know, I had a pastor friend went to you and said, I said, you're right. Because when I went to check the scriptures, I realized it. Yeah. I realized it. Because if you even check the understanding, when we get there, you understand. When his body was removed, it was not too far from the tomb. Mm. And the tomb was not in the mountain. The tomb was in the cave. That means that this is the cross a few meters away is the tomb which is in the mountain. Because it's a sepulcher, so it's inside the mountain. Don't worry, it's like Christmas Day, it's like Easter. It's all those things. It's like those things. Can we continue the message? Yeah. Let's continue my message. I said this to explain next week when I'm explaining the path he took why he walked where he walked. So we can understand a couple of things. It will help us. It will truly help us. Because what the Bible say? And they took him from the cross and buried him in a garden which was close. So there was a garden close to the cross. It can't be on top of the mountain. <laughs> Remember last week in times of ignorance, God doing that. Understand? Number two, I'm not teaching you this to go and um, this is a wrong thing. Hey, please. 
we are not the crusaders of the Lord. I have not assumed. <laughs> Amen. Still sing that hymn on a hill far away to the old. Sing it. I said, What? Sing it. Why? The message is what's important, not the location. What the cross did is what's important, not where it was found. I'm just saying in case you go to Israel right now, you Google it and you see that the cross is not on the mountain. Don't come and argue with me. So start song still holds. On the hill far away stood our old rather cross. The emblem of suffering. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we get to heaven, you understand that all these things are God's opportunities to create in us the testimonies that provide answers for us. See what he said? Nice. I like this, what he said. He said, the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. So it means where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden by it. It's in the Bible. A new sepulcher. And the sepulcher is in a mount. It's in a hill. So they cut it inside the cave. He didn't say beside the place or away from the place. He said the place. The place he was crucified. Do you have passion? Let's see what passion said. Did passion help us? Did passion help us? Uh, near the place, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Amen. So literally, Jesus died in the garden. Hey. It's worrying you. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Come on. What? You have something to say? Okay, okay, okay. All right. So very powerful. Amen. No, I'm serious. Listen, start opening your eyes to the scriptures. I, I keep telling you something very powerful. If you don't take your time to read the Bible, you're like, anything goes, no, you will deceive yourself. The Bible you know is not the Bible that works for you. The Bible you meditate on. You can know the scripture, but if you don't meditate on it, it will make no sense. It will do not. You will not look like anything you are reading. You must meditate on it. Your life must be it. How come you are a Christian but you are stingy? Who send me a dun? Iron fist. Hard hand. You don't know how to do not to give. I remember when I went to infant from the first year. As soon as I got there, a senior came and hey, hey, for my boy. He said, Do you have sardine? And they had told me that say no. So everything that I started doing, I said no. I said, you don't know. Everything no. Ah, for my boy, you know they give. <laughs> you know they give. Then you know. There was a senior there, slide down by. He slapped my his hand was bigger than my chest. Yeah. Big hand. That's why they call him slide down by. Big hand. Bam, bam! On my chest. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I know because I was tall, they felt I could endure punishment. Then there was another guy called Ogboro. He had a very profane name. I didn't want to say the other one. He said, Do you hand like this? He said, I'm come to give you. He said, There's something called Boumaze. Come, let me show you how to do it. Like when you come like the former boom, boom, you bend, then your back in your spine. So it sends a shock wave from your brain to your back. Boom! Then they have something called shocker. The center of your head. Boom! Yeah. And come. Then that's how I know what they do. So this one, this is what it is. So as I was here, you see in your armpit, you punch it. Boof. Put a punch in my chest. What's up? Or me and me and send my emblem. Oh, for my boy, you cry. <laughs> hey. 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> I went to report to someone who knew my mom, but he was teaching in school. And I told him, he said, This is what they did to me. He said, hey. When you get to form three, you do the same thing. <laughs> I said, Hey, yeah. That's what they are telling me. I'm telling you. Hey, it helped us. There were extreme cases, yes. But this generation, there's no beating. Yeah, that's right. You enter your prefect's room, eh, and they are folded belt in categories. There's leather. There's, there's one called they call dragon. There's one they call torture. There's different kinds of belts. One's like a screw. They fold. And you see, in secondary school, eh, the seniors knew something called proper leather. It's not today that we yeah. wear synthetic. The belt was proper leather. It can soak water. Yeah. Yeah. Then they squeeze it. When it, it doesn't do pop, it does pop. <laughs> it's a scourge. 
it will activate your nervous system. <laughs> I'm telling you something. Ha! So the belt can land on you, pa, like a weight. It has touched something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's take our touch on, on, on the cross. But listen, what I'm trying to bring your mind to is this, that there's a cross Jesus was crucified. No, I'll, I'll show you so many of the pictures so you can see how it conforms to the Bible. And the picture of how Jesus died conforms to the prophecy. And remember what I said. If he's dying in a garden, the flaming sword that leads to the entrance of a garden, the tree is in the garden. That's how you link scriptures. So it can give you a picture that, oh my God, he's been before me ever since. That the Lord came to enter that garden on our behalf. No wonder Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 says that we may enter by the blood. And the blood was accessed by the new and the living way which is consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Quickly, finally, I'm just going to show you a couple of the crosses. Now, this cross Jesus died on, some people have argued that Jesus actually carried a literal cross. Well, the weight, the average weight of the literal cross is around 135 to 180 kilograms. That's around 300 to 400 pounds of wood. Number two, that was dangerous for the prisoner. Because that means that if the prisoner was weak, he can be crushed by the very cross he's carrying. Then the purpose of the cross has been lost. So they save you. You will not carry the whole cross. So usually in Rome, you will notice that along many of these locations I'm mentioning, you will see something called a simplex or a beam just in the ground. So what he carried was actually something called the platybum or the cross beam. So he had tied to the stick and you are going. And that's why when he couldn't, for him not to crash himself. He fell down, hit him. Simeon was called. And usually that's what they did. When a person was struggling, they can call anybody from the crowd to come and assist. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. But no, no, no. Next week I'll get into that. It, it's, there's a very powerful picture concerning what Jesus said to us. That's so amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, let's see how these crosses look like. Can you put me the simplex? Cross simplex. Now, cross simplex is a simple cross that was just a beam. That's it. Can you enlarge it in some way for us? For those so it's a simple beam like this. Uh -huh. A person was kneeled, kneeled like this. Now, a lot of these pictures went through artistic renditions. So many things. For instance, when the Bible says that Thomas detached the... Jesus said, touch my hand. The Greek word for hand there is actually from the tip of your finger to your... Your, your, your shoulder, oh, sorry, sorry, your elbow. So every year, everywhere from here to here is a hand. In fact, if you read even scripture, according to how the tabernacle was measured, the Bible calls it a hand's breadth. That means the tip of your finger to your elbow was a hand's breadth. So a hand was the entire this. And Jesus said, touch my hand. So it was not, you know, people did it literally and put it in the palm. It was not his palm. It was put in, I told you, next week you get there, I'll show you the pictures of all of that. Now, um, um, Please, when I teach you, then you go and check it. Do you understand? Otherwise, your mind will be racing. Oh, I know that, I know that, I know that. Anyways, you can try it. God will lead me to other pictures. Eh. So, simplex. This is a simple one. It's just a beam. Then there's another one. Put the next one there for me. What we call the decusata. Decusata is what St. Andrew died on. Decusata. And the word decu is from the word deca. Ten. It's the number X. Representing the Roman number ten. And decusata is what... Um, St. Andrew died on. This is what Andrew was killed on. It's called the St. Andrew cross. There's another cross called the Greek cross. That's like the number plus. Okay. There are different kinds of crosses. Dif the Greek cross, number plus. But there's also what we call the Roman cross or the Latin cross. That is what we call the crux commissa. Or the crux emissa. The crux emissa. Do you have a picture? Emissa. I didn't say Emisa, I said Emi, Emi. Crooks Emisa. Please, can you find a picture for me? Crooks Emisa, i give it to you. It doesn't have somebody on it, just that picture I gave you. I, I pray I did that, I did that, I did that, right? Okay. 
No, I gave you another one. Just the cross. Just the cross. Okay, no, this is Komisa. All right. Now you no move from here. Go to Imisa. The typical the typical cross. I think I sent it to you. It's a brown one. You are still at Komisa. You are not at Imisa. Ah, that's it. Uh -huh. So this is a typical emissa. But the difference between the emissa and the commissa is that both are made of something called, except for the decusata, which is X like that. The emissa and the commissa are interesting in terms of the level of insertion. So the, the emissa dips more. And the reason for this is because it's believed that it's likely that because of what John chapter 19 i think the verse number 31 said are we there john 19:31 uh huh no 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 go back to 21 sorry are we there uh huh uh huh he says right uh huh so there was a plate that was put upon his head usually next week i'll get into that when the criminal was dying his crimes were written on a plaque. And he holds it to go to die. But with Jesus' own, his crime was not written. They put it on his headrest. And they couldn't put it, it was a, what we call the typical, go back, go back, go back to the pictures. The typical um, crooks. Uh -huh, go to the one before this one. You just showed one before this one. No, no. The commissar. <laughs> Yeah, so if it was like this, there's no place to place the plate because his head will touch it. And no one, he said they should have to put it in such a way that the whole of the world will see his name. So it couldn't be this one. Yet, you see, that's why if you see it, the, this one has his head close to it. So it's better it's dipped, his head rests here, and this sign shows. So it's both, in fact, the actual name of the cross of Jesus Christ is called the Crux Compactor. And the cruise compactor, I'm speaking Latin, what is here? Uh -huh. So the cruise compactor is actually based on the cross beam and the simplex, that is the pole. So this is the particulum or the, the simplex, the, sorry, the cross beam that the person carries on his own. Then this is waiting for the person when he gets there. And so that he will carry the name, it was inserted a little bit. But you see, whether it is Imisa or it is Commissar, it is still Tav. It still fulfilled the last Hebrew letter. The Aleph and the Tav. It still fulfills the T. Where he is the Tav. He is the cross. No wonder the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 11, out of the stem of David shall come forth a rod. Out of stem of David shall come what a branch that shall grow out of all his roots. So Jesse has a stem. That's David. And Jesus Christ is a branch of that stem. So a tree is dying on a tree. Wow. <laughs> and it's not small B. Capital B. A branch. So it's a specific branch he's talking about. A person he's talking about. What am I trying to bring your mind to? He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. But you know the shocking thing? The reason the cross is dateless, timeless in origin, but effective or functional in time is because, remember what Tav means. Tav is the mark or the sign of a covenant. This is where when we get to a certain message I'll preach, the token of the covenant, you understand that it could only happen on the sign of the covenant, the cross cross the t that means that as he died on the cross there's a covenant that was bonded with us can i even surprise you today technically the believer does not have a new covenant if the believer has a new covenant it means he had an old one so the new covenant has to do with israel hey, 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 not really us I will not make it as I made with you of old. It was not us. 
It's not us. Technically. <laughs> Listen. These are the things we look at. And it gives us a strong foundation in our Godhood. It validates our pursuit of God. Those days of playing church has died. It has ended. There are too much realities in God. If you meditate on it, your mind will be fixed on him all the time. These are the things we look at all the time. And if you get these revelations, oh, we are still working on our flyer. You understand that the flyer is actually the, what, the language of the way. Because the cross is the way. The cross is the entrance. The cross is the door. The cross is the gate. Because he has gone to suffer without the gate. There is a gate in the cross. There is a door in the cross. There is a way in the cross. And if you pick up that cross daily, every gate, door, and opportunity you are believing God for, that cross will give you entrance into. That cross will give you entrance into it. So the cross is not wickedness. It's the method of living like God. It's the method of living like God. If you don't allow yourself to be crucified, you'll be miserable in this life. And today when we stand before God, we understand the truth that of a truth that has been from old. And thy ways have been from everlasting. There is nothing new under the sun, truly beloved. It was written. He said, according to Acts 2, 23, that he delivered Jesus according to a predeterminate counsel. There was a veto system among the Godhead. Oh, when we get to the name, the blessings, that's the attributes and the glories we get from the cross. That's what we call the virtues of the cross. The value system that the cross added to us. You understand that the name could not come onto the cross. He has, by reason of inheritance, obtained a better name. How could he inherit it? By the cross. So when he says, take up your cross and follow me, there's something happening in the spirit. Follow me. Follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. You understand that every morning you wake up. You understand that song. If I live, I live for you. If I die, I die for you. Hello, oh, oh, my way. I am ever yours if I need in all I am yours if I leave. Metiasia, 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 the last picture the last picture there's a last picture i send you it looks like a cartoon show it right now in numbers chapter 23 there's a prophet that stood upon the mountain pisgah and he looked down into the dwelling of israel 
Askobaya Tanuskita Le Kambos Katalibe Etos Kataya And this is it This is Dan, this is Asha, this is Neftali This is Judah, this is Issachar, this is Zebulon This is God, this is Simeon, this is Reuben This is Ephraim, this is Manasseh, this is Benjamin This is Balaam and this is Barak As they look down into the camp of Israel they saw the cross he said i shall see him but not now out of him shall come him that shall be king over israel he was seeing the cross he said how beautiful are the dwelling places of the righteous he saw the cross whilst you are thinking you are failing jesus is revealing the cross to your enemies the enemy is seeing an altar higher than the altars he is seeing an altar higher than all altars i came to tell somebody in all your way in all your way acknowledge it long before Jesus died this is long before Jesus died this is long before Jesus died even in Israel they were showing the picture of the cross but they were not aware <laughs> and the ark where the smoke of God is coming is the Shekinah it means that at the center of the cross is the Messiah he has been there at the spot ever since ever since Ever since, in all my ways, I'm ever yours. If I live, I live for you. I live for you. In all my ways, in all my ways. In the morning when I wake up. Every time they moved, they moved in this formation. Even when they were disobeying God, it was a cross. Even when they didn't believe in God, they were still drawing the cross pattern. So it means even when you think God is not on your side, remember, ah, cause Kataya. Cain has killed his brother. But God marks his head with a cross. So that when they see the mark, he said, nobody can touch you. I came to tell somebody even when you are broke even when you are backsliding there is the mark of the cross on you there's a mark there's a mark when your enemies want to hurt you as soon as they see the mark they back off you must understand you are marked forever there's no recovery to that scar of the cross the cross has marked you and he has sealed with the holy ghost of promise you are sealed you are sealed somebody you are sealed in all
mark of the cross. You carry the mark of the cross. I am your scar if I need. I for you. So I'm finally one of the one whom my soul has. He lives in me and I in him. I am finally one with the one my soul loves. I am his, so we live forever. I am finally one with the one my soul loves. He lives inside of me and I in Him. I am finally one with the one my soul loves. I live with Him to the end forever. Because of the cross, I'm finally one. Said I'm finally one with the one my soul loves. He lives inside of me and I in him. I am fine, finally one with the one my soul loves. I will live. This way forever. Listen, there's something God is about to do. Whatever you are led to do, come to the altar, kneel down, whatever you are. You are marked by the cross. You are crucified with Him. Paul didn't say try to be crucified. He said, knowing this, that ye are crucified. It's a knowledge. You must know. It's, it, whether you agree or not, it's that. <laughs> In the one my soul, he lives inside of me. Oh, I forever. To your grace, to your love, you wrote my story today. Time for me and live in me to your grace, to your love. You wrote my story before I was ever a clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said I'm finally, said I'm finally. Where the one my soul loves, it lives inside of me. I need. I am finally. I am finally with the one. With the one my soul loves, I will live in His face. of Calvary with the one my soul loves He lives inside of me I am finally I am finally one with the one I love so I will live in this side forever I will live in your side. I will live in your side forevermore. I will live in your side. I will live in your side forevermore. I will live in your side. I will live in your side forevermore. I will live in your 
your side. I will live in your sight forevermore. Oh, the cross, oh, what love that a man should die for me so that I will, will be with him forever. Oh, oh, the cross, oh, what love, that a man should die for me, that I will live his life in this place. Listen, oh, what cross, oh, what love, that a man should die for me, that he permits me to live in this life, as he did. I'm crucified with Christ indeed. It's a past tense. It's a reality. It's not I feel like it's the truth. It's objective. It's not something I have to beg. It is the state of my existence. I will live in this life as him. As him. Oh, what love the cross that a man should die for me that I should be given this privilege to live even as I live I live as Christ oh the cross oh the love that the Lord has died for me that I should live in this life as him so I'm finally yes I'm finally one with the one so I am one with him he lives inside of me and I said I'm finally Oh, what love, oh, what love, oh, what love, Casco Valaya, yeah, 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 oh, live as him, oh, what love, oh, what love, oh, the cross. That a man should die for me That I will live in this life Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the love we do not deserve. Unmerited love. That could not hold you. Silence the voice of sin and grave. Heavens are roaring.
when I see how deliberate he was to die. From the story I just told you, you could see that it's, it's a formula they have worked. There's nothing by mistake that he died. Of. It was planned. Next week, I'll show you that at the time Jesus was about to die on the cross, uh, they had really killed any Jew on the cross. Meanwhile, too, he didn't tell anybody or suggest how he should die. He had no part to play, but David had prophesied in 1,000 years about how Jesus would die before he ever died. Oh, lift your hands. Yes, Just bless him. Somebody. The glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your sister name above Just bless him, somebody. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. She Beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. Oh, nothing compares to it. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Holy, oh, me ever I couldn't have God. Oh, we chased him down and fight still now. He is the night. Next week, I'll show you. He was determined to die. Listen. <laughs> when he entered the garden, he said, Lord, if it is possible. You know why? The reason why he wanted the cup to leave me is because he was going to become a case. I showed you. He has never been separated from the father. That which I see my father do, I do the same. But for the first time, the father won't do what he's come to do. So he's like, I, I don't like this one. But the moment the father said, that's part of the plan. He hugged the cross. He loved the cross like his very life. That this one, I like it. He loved it so much that sir, when he resurrected, he gave it to us. You to take it. I didn't finish a certain work. Mm. I've left for you a certain suffering, a certain carry, an example concerning the sufferings of Christ. Reckless, reckless. That's why you can't love short of this. You can't be mean to people. You can't be selecting who you like and who you love. It is a reckless love. When you curse him, when you insulted him, when you say you don't believe in him and he's a, you, you, you don't believe in God, it's a lie. He still loved you. I didn't end it. I don't deserve it. It's still you gave yourself Still you gave yourself away. Oh, yes. 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 Come on. Let me hear you. Let me hear you.
Can I have a visa? Can I have a visa? Even if I fail, can I have a visa? Even when I fall, said God is unwilling to cast away do you know why in heaven he's a lamb now anytime we look at the lamb and some people go to hell it means it looks as if his sacrifice was not enough that's why he's unwilling to cast away oh he will do everything to make sure that you are safe that's why we have to sing that song and I have come to dwell drop from the world Never understood. Jesus, Jesus, you are the way. I never understood. And I've come. Are you tired today? Are you afraid of the year today? Are you not sure whether God will do it as He promised you? Come on, sing this song. Jesus. I've come to draw. I've come to draw. Jesus. From the well. The never runs dry. Jesus. You are the well. The never runs dry. I've come to draw. To draw, said I've come to draw, draw from the well, the devil runs around. Said Jesus is the well, you are the well, never runs dry. To draw from you, we've come to draw. We've come to draw from, from you. We've I've come, come to draw from you. Wave your hands to Jesus. Who is like you, Lord, and only you? Much this love and beauty. Nothing in this world satisfies. Listen, the moment something can satisfy aside God, you are in trouble. The reason why Instagram has taken your attention is because it seems to satisfy more than God. 
The reason why YouTube has taken your time is because it seems to satisfy more than God. The reason why you think a party will make you happy is because it seems to satisfy more than God. But until only God is your satisfaction, there will not be a there will not be a compass that leads you to the altar all the time. Something else can satisfy. No. Jesus, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty in this world. Much less love and beauty in this world. Said nothing in this world will satisfy me. Nothing in this world will satisfy me. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. I said, Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. I said, Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. As a Jesus is my cup that puts one dry. Jesus is my cup that won't one dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Show presence, Lord. Your presence is heaven. All my days, all my days. Calabas, Catalaba. All my days on earth, I will not wait until I see you face to face. The moment that I see you face to face. Calacatos Capiana Tala, Tosca Baha. For nothing in this, in this world was satisfied. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. I said, dry. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup okay. that won't run dry. Jesus is my cup. Jesus is my cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus is my cup. Jesus is my cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus is my cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup. Your presence, Lord, yeah. Your presence is heaven. I need you every hour of my day. I need Jesus every hour. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven, your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, 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 oh
Vou dizer Vou dizer Your presence, your presence is His heaven. Oh, Jesus is Your presence, your presence is heaven. Your presence is heaven to me. You know, there's a song that spoke about the second stanza of the same song spoke about how that can you sing the second song for me no there's one before that in my weakness you're strong and of my soul in my weakness in my weakness listen, listen I'm going ahead of myself but next week I'll touch on this Jesus saw every weakness you would do And still died. He saw the end of your salvation, the end of the communication, and say, "You know something? I'll still bet on this guy. I'll still bet on this lady. I know they'll divorce. I know they'll not listen to my instruction, but I'm willing to still die. I'm still going to make an opportunity for them. And the day they turn around, it's always going to be a blessing. He knows your weakness. He still died." He knows you will not be serious, but he still died. He knows you argue with him, but he still died. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. He is my weakness. My weakness. You are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present problems. Redeemer of my past. Yes, that's true. Future days to come, yes. Hold your up my future days to come. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You the order of my future days to come, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Hold your up my future days to come. Treasure of my heart. Treasure of my heart. You are merciful. Yes, you are merciful. Katima Momosalia, Redeemer. Redeemer of You are holding my future and days to come. My future days to come. Your presence, your presence, your presence. Your presence is heaven to me. Heaven. To me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your presence, your presence, your presence, your presence, is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence, your presence, Lord, yes, is heaven to me. Is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Wave your hands to Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. You see, because of what he has done for us, we sing such songs. Sing songs of his praise. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice. Do you know something? It's because of this, eh? <laughs> Jesus, no sacrifice. That's why I like that also. Why am I a cataya bonus? Why am I a Namisha? Why are you on Shrauta? In tea, seminar, seminar, I am here. 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 
Did you see the picture of Balaam and Barak? Uh, uh, Balak? Israel was not even aware. They were misbehaving. But somebody was on top of the mountain. He couldn't catch them. He said, how beautiful are the dwelling places of God. Whilst you are even in sin, the outside world is in glory. Do you understand what he has done? Are you serious? Are you serious? That's why it's like that. Ah, let me ask you a question. Fasting, or did you fast well? What did you do to get miracle money? I am young. I am this year, somebody will enjoy the blessings and the thanksgivings and the mercies of God. You will enjoy the loving kindness of God. That no matter how you are started, no matter how difficult it is, you will still get your testimony. You will still get your miracle because He's faithful. He's faithful that has promised. Sometimes we can fast and pray. And when the testimony comes, we are like, oh, because we fasted. But we forget that when we were serious, before we became serious with God, there are some miracles that happened that we were not even expecting. When you became serious, now you think it's because of you. God will do it. He has been doing this. Don't live in the castle. Live in the castle. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you. This is the reason why sometimes we sit in the car, we like, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes some bad thoughts can come to our mind. Then when we look at God and we look at the kind of things we are thinking, we say, Adoria Bakato Skaba. Thank you, Jesus. He said, We have not come to the mountain that cannot be touched, lest it be pierced through by an arrow. But because of the Holy Spirit and the sacrifice, you can have a bad thought and still come to church. You can have a bad thought whilst doing money devotion. Kabatuski Ataba. Pass the church. We're having battles. Una bibianyo. Na yemye kataya bonus. Na yemye. Na my answer. This year you will live the cross. This year you will live the benefits of the cross. You will live in the blessings of the cross. You will live in the finished work of Christ. It is not your effort, it is his might. Father, we give you glory. We honor you for your blessing. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Let, let me show you a scripture that will make you worship God. I don't. I feel something in the spirit. Look at something. Look at something. Ah, Lord, I thought today. Look at something. Look at it. What am I trying to quote at all? Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-two. Go there. Go there. Rabba kote skapa. Can we read from? Look at. Let's read together from the King James. Then we we'll go to passion. Mm. Look at something. He that what spared not his own son. But delivered him for us. This is about the cross. He how shall he not with him, not from him, with him? Also give us all things freely. Passion. 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 Let's read together. That God has given us the greatest treasure. So the good you are looking for is not a car. It's the Lord. The glory you are looking for when you say thank you Jesus. is not for a breakthrough. He is the greatest treasure. Not a car. He is the greatest treasure. Not a, not a marriage. He is the greatest treasure. 
not uh, not the things you are they are byproducts of the of the blessing. This is the main blessing. The greatest treasure. Because of his message, we are not consumed. We are not consumed. I pray this year you'll be safe in his love, safe in his mercy, safe in his loving kindness and his tender mercies. God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. Somebody say, God's got me. Say, God's got me. He's arranging everything that concerns my life. He's arranging everything to perform it even in the day he has planned. In Jesus' mighty name, every saint here shall shout, Hallelujah! I said shout. I didn't say say. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. If you came to church, if an offering lifted to God, let's pray. God willing, Saturday, love matters. Don't miss it for anything. 3 p.m. We are here. Love matters. And then on Sunday, we have a spiritual love feast. First fruit of souls. Bring somebody to church. Bring somebody to church. Bring some a soul to church. We have a lot of things to tell them about the love of God. Bring them to church. Bring, invite your soul to church that you need to hear this love message. You need to hear this love message. On the 6th of March, we have World Wealth Conference. Um, somewhere around 9th, we have a Passover service. Pastor Alex will come. Alex of the cross will come and teach us about the cross on, on Passover Sunday. That's 9th April. 30th, Prophet Nana is also coming. Hallelujah. Amen. So that uh, 24th, that's the end of this month, the last Friday. We have an all night. Amen. Yeah. And Prophet Boyd is coming. Hallelujah. The Prophet Boyd is coming. It's going to be a powerful time. Amen. Uh, God has given us grace to elaborate our calendar for the year. So uh, it's going to be a powerful time. Amen. Amen. Remember on the 18th of, that's after Valentine's. Uh, in case, God forbid, but on the Valentine's, uh, well, after Valentine, 18th of, of February. Of what? February. Yes, we are going to pray at the bush. Hallelujah. Um, oh, no, it's necessary. So, when Prophet Nana came here, the, the, the prophet who came last week, um, somebody contacted me and said that, oh, he remembers me. I taught her how to pray. I used to carry them to the bush at ATTC. So, uh, for me, I'm a bushman. I know the mathematics of the bush. I will take you to the bush. We shall pray. Yes, when Ephesus was starting, we were in the bush a lot. I remember the bush prayers. Yes, we used to be in the bush. So we are going back to the bush on the 18th of February. So after the love lesson, the next one is we are in the bush. We are praying. So we'll tell you which bush we'll go to, whether it's Achimota Forest or Miracle Center. We are going to pray from 9 to 4 p.m. We'll fire prayer. I will cut We are going to pray. So come with your tracksuit and come with your desert boot because we'll be praying. Uh, there's no chair there. So we are going to pray. So don't 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 come joking. Come with your bottles and your water. Come we start Akoya. We are going. I'm not joking. <laughs> you know me. I told you if I promise you something, the next bush prayers will be May. I told you every quarter we'll do one. So the next one is May. Then we are going like that. Then July. As soon as I say it is happening. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if you are volunteer to get ready for end of February exams, so you are getting ready. Yes. So prepare yourself. I've advised you, please. Uh huh. The volunteers, they know they have to give me a letter of intention. Uh, by the grace of God, some of you have not finished it. So, some of you say you didn't see anything. God didn't show you a vision. So, you have one more week. By 11th, if I don't get your letter, you are automatically sacked. The cross has separated you. This is cross de Kusata. We have X you out of that thing. Hallelujah. You have become an X. <laughs> an X volunteer. Amen. So, make sure I get your letter. Uh -huh. you know already i've told you the guidelines to it lift your offering to the lord jesus father i bless every offering i think the the bank account the momo account will come online we pray over every offering the lord as we give it in this year that the enemy wants to throw famine and scarcity we are like isaac we reap a hundredfold i said we reap a hundredfold hundredfold is not ten times hundredfold is a thousand more a hundredfold is a thousand more. We pray in Jesus' name that the Lord Himself will multiply hundredfold. He will fold any amount you put hundred times and bring it to you in Jesus' mighty name. We declare so we call it done. Amen. Amen. All right, we give God praise. All right, so can we get a song from the Lord? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know that song? My dear, you say that song we were singing. I said, He is standing by my side. Can you sing it? And try, try again. 
He is standing by my side I can surely never fail Cause I've got the Holy Spirit Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit He is standing by my side I can surely never fail Cause I've got the Holy Spirit Got the Holy Spirit Holy, 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 Holy Holy, Holy Spirit He is standing by my side He is standing by my side I can surely never fail surely never fail Cause I've got the Holy Spirit Got the Holy Spirit Holy, Holy Holy, 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 holy He is standing by my side. He is standing by my side. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. Cause I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy Spirit. He is standing by my side. Oh. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. Cause I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy. He is standing by my side. He is standing by my side. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. Cause I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Spirit. He is standing by my side. He is standing by my side. This is a song you should carry this way. I can surely never fail. Listen. December 2020. 2020. So I was in a I was in a meeting and I think this song came. I mean I'd even forgotten it. Songs come, I just sing it and we go. So I think um, the Lord led her to perfect it and learn it uh -huh, so. yeah. we'll come out with an album soon amen. amen so this song God gave it to us 2020 and so I just sense that you should hear it so that you begin to sing it wherever you are going you can never fail it's on your side Father I sanctify this communion I declare that it turns to your power your power goes through it the chemistry has changed to a mystery. When they take it, Lord, let there be transformations. I activate the agitations of the Holy Spirit. I declare that by this, life forevermore. Life forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, your name be exalted. Amen. He is standing by my He is standing by my side. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. Because I've got the Holy Spirit. Never alone. He is standing by my 
You are never alone. In that exams, you are never alone. In the presentation, you are never alone. In the office, you are never alone. You are not alone in your room. As you are driving to your hometown, you are not alone. You are not alone anywhere. I have got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. I cause I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy. He is standing by my side. He is standing by my side. I can surely never fail. I can surely never fail. Cause I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy. the strength of God. Walk in the strength of his ability. From today, the cross is deliberate. The cross is intentional. The cross is deliberate. May you move everywhere with the revelation and the strength of the cross. You can never fail again. It's too late to fail. This year is your year. I said this year is your year. This year, Satan will lose his hold in your life. This year, Satan will lose the inroads and the profit he has made from your life. This year, Satan will give up on the troubles he has brought you. This year, you will see God's justice and vengeance in your family. This year, you will see God bring you testimonies you have never dreamt of before. This year, you will drive your new car. This year, you will have your new house. This year, you will have your scholarship. This year you are getting your visa. This year you are getting your proposal. In the name of Jesus. This year you are welcoming your children. This year you are having your marriage. In the name of Jesus. 
Father, let there be a surprise. Because of the cross, let every limitation that has hindered our progress be taken out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Holy, 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 holy Spirit, standing by my side. Today this is the anthem. Yes, it will be the anthem. It's in the Spirit. You are blessed. realize the mystery of iniquity that is at work in the earth i realize not submitting to you is allowing iniquity to work in me therefore tonight i repent i yield my member even as your instrument i accept you jesus as my lord and savior today I enter the family of God because of your sacrifice. Thank you for accepting me and cleansing all my sins and my unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen.